It's a very uh, irritating game. I like Frogger. I think Pac-Man's better. Pac-Man's a good game. I was just thinking about this literally today at work. I was like, I feel like I could have thrived in that arcade era of like the early 80s early or 80s, yeah. 70 like yeah like because yeah, i was with donkey kong was it was it like the original donkey kong right like and all that? right yeah. yeah and my reasoning behind that is i i feel like as i'm getting older i am becoming more of a i, I kind of like a lot of different things but i feel like i can only put a little bit of time into each of these things so sometimes like i'll hop on and off a bunch of different stuff like i'll play something for like an hour or 30 minutes and then i'll move on to something else whether that's yeah. playing or watching so i feel like i could have done really well just you know playing around a pac-man and then swinging over and playing some i don't know like air hockey i mean that's not a video game but you know no i, I hear you like because that's basically what the in, in car, arcades are made for just for quick right. little games you can just hop on and off so that's cool I do love me. There's, there's a lot of good stuff in arcades. I love air hockey. There, I love pinball. Yeah, I, I just like the stuff. feel of a arcade, like the buttons and the uh, like joystick. Yeah, I like the big uh, arcade uh, games. Like they have like like a seat for you to sit, sit down in. One of my favorites, and I, I I've always wanted to see if there's like a way you can download it on on a computer, and I'm sure there is. With like you know, emulators and. Uh, emulators and all that did you ever hear the game called uh, the ocean hunter that was like one of my favorite games at, in, in, no uh, the arcade. yeah i've never heard of this i'm gonna look it up right now yeah yeah it's, it's, it's one of the bigger ones where like like you have to sit down and there's like a like a turret you can hold on to and you know like as you move it the like the uh the crosshairs move on the giant screen and everything and just one of those like i mean granted if you look it up now the graphics are like obviously like really old it's just like just one of those old school arcade games, but it was like where you, uh, like it was all 3D. Oops, I had to hit my microphone. Like it's all 3D, and like you kind of just, like it's like, it's kind of like on, it's like one of those, uh, like rail car games where like your characters just move, like you don't really control where they move, and then you just gotta like shoot the, uh, the uh, dangerous ocean life before they get you, and like you, yeah, it's just one of those like really, really fun games that I would always look forward to playing whenever I went to uh, live. The, the Jillions that used to be at the mall where I live. But before I continue our talk about this, I just got to cut you off real sick, real quick and say my cat just ran up my stairs and just jumped head first into my dirty laundry pile, which is big, but not that big. And then he just jumped out and ran back downstairs. <laughs> Did he spook you? <laughs> got, gotta love animals. Uh, I Yeah, he startled me, but at the same time, I was also laughing because I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Um, but back to the Ocean Hunter, uh, these screenshots, while the graphics aren't the best, are still very terrifying. There's a horrible anglerfish, giant yeah. anglerfish boss that it appears people are shooting at. It's scary. Yeah. Oh, yep. I just Googled it myself. And yeah, there's, there's an anglerfish. Like a, ooh, the Great White Sharks right here. Like, there's a couple good ones. And uh, there's like the giant octopus or the kraken or whatever. Like, it, it's just one of the games that was always fun. It was hard, too. Like I, I would lose so many times in this game it was tough there was a many quarters there was a game that i've never played that one but i I swear i've probably seen it before the one that i played that's kind of similar to it i'm I'm looking it right up or i'm looking up now to get the name of it i believe it's called the dead storm pirate deluxe arcade shooter just search dead Dead storm pirates it might come up yeah oh i want to say i've seen this before too it's a modern it's yeah, it's got like nautical, like ocean stuff as well as pirates. That's I kind of like, like get in, and it's like a cabin. I, I feel like this isn't even the one I played, but I played something like this. I want to say I've I probably have played a game j- similar to this. Yeah, maybe not the exact same one, but because I'm looking right here, it looks like one of the logos, and yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty sure I've seen this before. Yeah. A lot of the like modern arcade things that you'd find at like a, a Dave and Buster's or even a Round One, they have like these kind of all-encompassing like you get into like a little theater and they have like a really big screen sometimes they even have effects like oh you can put on these 4d or 3d glasses although no one's doing that right now during this pandemic but they they are cool there's even those like 
I, I always wanted to try one of these. I forget what it's called. I'm going to look it up here. But there's, like, these huge, like, Star Wars, like, simulator arcade uh, oh, okay. pods that literally, like, put you in the action. Uh, here, I'm going to I'm gonna find it for you so you can get an image of this. But they're really neat. Like, they're literally, like, you step into this big enclosed thing. Oh, my God. I got to find it now. I, I don't know what it's called, though. Yeah, I haven't been to an, arc an arcade in I could I couldn't tell you how long. So I'm, I mean I'm pretty sure yeah, there's modern arcade games that look in, that look better, sound better. I just okay. I would say I've been to an arcade in easily like six plus years. The thing I'm talking about, if you want to look it up, is called Star Wars Battle Pod. Ooh, I'm intrigued. Star Wars. It, it always looks cool. I, I really want to give it a try at some point. It's it's relatively modern. Okay. I mean, it looks, it, it just looks like the stereotypical, like, you know, arcade machine, but uh, I don't know if I actually have ever tried this before. It looks pretty cool. Ooh, uh, I'm, trying to see, I'm trying to see if I can find some gameplay footage or pictures or I, something. I like the, in the search, there's like the two different variations. There's like a Vader one and like a, a Rebel one. I think that's pretty cool. Usually the yeah. ones I see are the, the one that's like got the Rebel logo and the Empire, or the, yeah, the. Yeah, this one right here. Yeah, it has like it's a it has like the red letter for, with Vader on it, and that and that's like a whole. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's like a whole little like enclosed theater. That's, that's yeah. kind of cool. And I, I like I said, I never played this. It even has like a. It looks like there's like a curved like type of screen in there. So yeah, and I assume there's like speakers in the seats, so it's like all encompassing. That's I always cool. wanted to try it, but I never did. I actually do really love like arcades. Like it, it's kind of a shame that they're not as big as they were, but I do get it. So every time I stumble across one when I'm out and about, I always uh, want to go in there and spend a few bucks. Also, if you yeah. live in a majorly populated city, there's a chance that there's probably at least one barcade in your city. I know there was one in Philly that I didn't get a chance to go in. There are multiple in New York, and I've been to a few in New York. I do know that uh, the, the the gallery down uh, down on, Mar on uh, Market Street that's now called the Fashion District. Uh, they have a round one. Is that like is is round one a barcade? Do they do they serve alcohol or is, just, is that just like a Jillian's or a Dave and Buster's? I'd say round one. It they do sell they do sell alcohol. Um, okay, they're kind of like a, a Dave and Buster's. I would say a little less focused on food. Round one has more. Um, activities you can do so besides arcade you know there's like a bowling alley in there yeah they have like exactly. a bunch of karaoke like rooms they got like um ping pong and pool tables but i would say m majorly it's like an arcade with like a bunch of other things and there even is like a small restaurant in there although it's not like a dave and busters that literally has its own restaurant section it's like here's like a food court where there's a little bar and there's a little ordering station where you can get like what you would get at like a bowling alley type food, but it's slightly I better. Gotcha. That's cool. Round ones are really cool. Like you can spend a good weekend in a round one, just exploring and trying out games. You've probably never even touched. They always have a really good selection of uh, crane games or the UFO catchers, which are the Japanese versions, which are more <laughs> about pushing rather than picking up an item. Round ones are great. I, I highly recommend round ones. Yeah. Maybe I'll go to the one at the at the uh, the fashion district one day. You know? oh, and to wrap up the talk about arcades, I also want to shout out a really cool arcade that I got to check out last year or maybe two years ago. I think it was two years ago. Uh, but it's in Asbury Park, New Jersey. It's actually technically a museum. It's called the Silver Ball Museum. And there are, I want to say, about 30 to 40 different pinball tables in there. And they actually cycle them out. Um I don't know how often they do that. But I want to say I've been here before. Yeah, it's really cool. My girlfriend took me there for like our anniversary. And uh, you can buy like, you can go in there and you can either pay per hour or get like an all day pass. And you just go nuts in the arcade. And it's majorly pinball, but they do also have a lot of the classic arcade games. Like they had Mario Brothers, they had Donkey Kong, they had Pac-Man. Cool. But yeah, they have literally the most modern pinball machines that you know because there are people still making pinball machines in the year 2020 they have like lcd screens all over the board and <laughs> on the top and then they also have ones that are from like the 50s and 60s so it's really interesting to see like both different variations and play them and believe it or not the ones from the 50s and 60s are actually pretty fun 
Yeah, I, I now that now that I'm, I'm looking at it, I don't think I have been here before, but it it seems it sounds so familiar because I'm pretty sure I've been to like a like like an old arcade museum before. Maybe it was maybe it was that when I was visit, when I was in California. I saw one of these. I, I could have swore like when I was on like a family trip, I've been to one. I could to one see, of these places. Yeah, I could see that. I I just thought it was really cool. I also really like pinball. I'm a big closet pinball fan. Are you a pinball wizard? Um, no. I, I would say I'm mediocre at pinball. I'm not very good. Pinball confuses me because I don't really understand how you start the quote-unquote quests or objectives in pinball. I kind of generally just try not to let the ball go down the well, so that's like my knowledge of pinball. I know there are things to do on each board that are unique. I just don't really know how to activate them usually. They, ex would... they try to explain it, but I'm not good at being like, uh, okay. I mean, I'm pretty sure, like, it's just, if you look at the pinball board, if you see, if you see anything that the ball can probably touch, it's probably, like, uh, I, I never heard the term quest before for a pinball. I, I just figure, like, if the ball hits one of these lights or hits one of these buttons, it's, it's going to give you points. And, yeah, ultimately the goal is just don't let the ball go into the bottom hole. The but... well, as it's called. But yeah, some boards they'll oh, be oh, like. Well, I'm sorry. I'm a I'm a very uh, ignorant person. Oh no, it, it's okay. That's a little pinball logo there. Everyone learned something, but no one knew that was called the well. No, only you, the pinball wizard, would know. So thank you, but, Corey, for the lesson. But yeah, sometimes in the pinball board, it will be like, oh, there'll be obvious ones where it's like hit this guy, and sometimes a guy will pop out of the bottom of the board. You know, oh, it's a skeleton. <laughs> but then other times, it's like, oh, we have to destroy these sixteen ships. Uh, hit these bumpers uh, 16 times, and it's like, which bumper? There's like eight different ones. Yeah. I'm not saying the boards are made poorly. I'm just saying I don't understand <laughs> what it wants me to do. Yeah. I think there's like, I mean, again, I can't tell you the last time I played a ping pong, uh, uh, I was going to say a ping pong game, a pinball game, but uh, sometimes you'll even see like little light tracks like that, that can light up that kind of give you like a trajectory from like where, where the, uh, like the, the the flippers is, is out there called or is there a term for those? I I uh, flippers I guess I don't know. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, I, I know like there's normally like like you'll see like little like light tracks from where the flippers are. That was like okay here maybe you can like angle where you want to like where you want to hit hit the uh, the ping pong. I keep saying ping pong the pinball too. So uh, that might give you in in the indicator of where the uh, the your you know which which bumpers to hit. I don't know. <laughs> I get what you're saying. Or, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I was trying to f to formulate the right things, but like, yeah, like, like you know, what I'm saying. I think another thing with pinball that is just really appealing to me is it just has really good like tactile ness mm -hmm. to it. Like when you actually hit the, well, it, it varies from board to board, but when you find the right board that the buttons and the flippers feel good, and like you pull back that, I don't know the proper word for it but like the little spring the spring yeah you know it's satisfying yeah and like the balls always have like a nice weight to them and mm -hmm. every time you get a multi-ball everyone like that's just a crowd pleaser like yeah everybody wins yeah it's like four pinballs on the board now it's fun yeah i hear the crowd going wild <laughs> Corey, Corey. you mean the two other sweaty nerds waiting to play the board behind me yeah exactly <laughs> You know, it's also fun just seeing all the weird, like, licensed pinball tables that they made. Because they have literally them for every popular 80s movie. There's even, like, there were oh, like, I can Nintendo ones, you know. That's it's, what I would... it's neat. It's neat. I would enjoy seeing, like, some of those. I mean, I'm sure... You, like, it's funny that you mentioned that. I'm sure there's, like, like an Indiana Jones one, a Star Wars one, like, any, like... I... If I don't mean the 80s, I'm sure. Yeah, and I don't want to get too into the weeds here with the pinball talk, but there were even some cool ones from like the late 80s into the early 90s that were like one was like Terminator themed and the instead of the spring, the like launcher or whatever you call it was like a gun handle and you essentially <laughs> squeeze a trigger and it shoots your pinball up and that was pretty cool. <laughs> that was pretty neat. That was for like Terminator it, 2 or something. It's a sign core. You got to watch that movie. One day, yeah. I'm just a turn. Uh, one more little thing. I'm reminded of casinos now because casinos have you know all crazy slot yeah, machines. They really do. And like and yeah, and like they have like the modern slot machines, which again kind of just look like arcade machines because you know you, you sit down and 
there's like like an LED screen, like a touch screen you can play with, and then it's like, look, here's the Star Wars one, here's the the James Bond one, and so that, that's kind of what I just got reminded of. Like, if it was a movie, or if, or if if it was ever like a TV show, there is like a casino slot machine out there somewhere, you know. Um. I, I just want to shout out to how disgusting mobile games are because you compared them to like, oh, what did you just compare? Like modern games. I feel like most pinball or excuse me, most uh, slot machines honestly look like things like Candy Crush and stuff like that, which when Something. you really when you get real meta about the world and you're like, well, Candy Crush is an addicting free to play game that kind of feeds on these microtransactions. And yeah. then you look at like a what what's a slot machine, and it's like uh, there's parallels here. Yeah, there is. It, it just it's it's it uh, I don't know, it's like our addict that the addictive nature that all humans have this preys upon it, and it does it very successfully, you know. And it's worse because in a slot machine, you know, well, I have to spend money to play it, but it's the, it's the free to play games that are like, oh yeah, it's free to play, but if you do spend money, we'll do this for you, and you'll get these little bonuses. Free and, to play, uh, wink. Yeah, it technically is free to play. Maybe not free to win if it's one of those good competitive phone games, but it is free to play. Actually, gosh, uh, this might be a good tr- transition into something. I, something I want to talk about because I learned this today from my own coworker about like uh, Apex Legends. I'm sh- I know you play that game, so maybe you, I do, might be able to comment on this. Okay, he was telling me how like this is also a game that does have a loot box system or a loot crate, whatever it's called. And, man, he was just telling me about, like, how some of these, like, these skins or, like, weapon upgrades or, you know, like, some kind of, like, just some kind of, like, a a uh, cosmetic or a, it, whether it's, like, a cosmetic thing for, like, your character or the weapon you have or an upgrade for your weapon. Like, he was telling me how some of them can cost, like, $500 to $2,000. Is this true? I'm going to say right now I don't know the... The uh, ha- I don't know with Apex um, content. However, I could definitely see it because Apex does have a lot of uh, uh, similarities to uh, Fortnite. And mm-hmm. there are definitely a lot of skins in Fortnite that are very, very rare that are worth thousands of dollars. That's crazy. So... Like- I I don't I don't know like every I haven't played Apex Leg- Legends like religiously I kind of hop on and off from time to time so yeah. I don't know all the different skins that they put in there for the heroes and the um the weapons but I it, it's definitely possible now how you get those skins and are are they generally aren't just like oh we want five hundred dollars for them usually yeah. they go up every they like rotate them out weekly. And it'll be like, oh, it's this much of the Apex currency, which means $20 normally, mm-hmm. you know. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Some of that stuff is crazy, but I I, I don't, I, I don't know. Like, I don't want to say that that's good behavior, but at the same time, you do have to look at the quality of Apex Legends and be like, well, this is a completely free-to-play game. You don't really need to buy anything to play it literally it's all cosmetics you know none of that stuff yeah. makes you a better player it's just like how do you want to pretty your gun or pretty your character yeah. and i've spent yeah, a lot of money on that game because i do really like it uh, mm-hmm. i know we talked about ea i don't really like what a lot of ea is doing but i think respawn is a good uh, studio i mean they even made that new star wars game that came out last year and that was really good mm-hmm. yeah yeah so I'll, I'll... so I don't know, but I believe that there are skins in Apex Legends that are worth okay. two hundred to five hundred dollars. I could yeah. see it, yes. Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe I shouldn't be so, as like very specific to just Apex. I just know that that was a game that you played. I didn't know if you played like the other battle royale games like Fortnite. But I, it was just it was kind of just blowing my mind that like I knew about the whole loot box system and how people spend you know like God knows how how much money on like this lottery system. Or not even a lottery, just like like, like a slot machine system. Where I, I guess, yeah, I guess you can consider a, a lottery system if these things are worth that much money. And like, if you do happen to get one of these like super rare skins or whatever cosmetic item it is, like, I mean, you can sell them too. Like, because funny, because I said like, well, if, if, let's just say you're like this guy pulled like, oh, you got this skin, yeah, this is going for like two thousand dollars. I'm thinking, like, how do you sell it? And I, I guess it's just as simple as. 
you just maybe you can transfer it on on the game itself, or you can get. I, I'm, not, I'm not that I, I'm not quite sure, but I have heard of people selling things like their entire account to somebody. Like, oh yeah, here's my Apex uh, my Apex account, and I have all these skins and all. I don't know. And like, and I guess you, I guess you technically you can sell somebody the username and the password, and then it's all theirs. Like, I think I've, I've even heard of people selling the Pokemon Go accounts. Like, yeah, I have like three shiny Charizards, and I had I caught all these legendaries, and people can literally just say, yeah, here's the uh, the username and the password. All right, cool. And they and they sell it for God knows how much money. I think I've even heard you can people have sold sold it on eBay. <laughs> I'm not even sure how that works, but. It was just—it was kind of like it was—it was just just something I learned today at work, and I was I was like laughing at it because it just seems so crazy. But I guess it's—I guess it's—it's it's not as crazy as it seems to me because this has been going on for a while. Uh, just doing a real quick uh, search here on eBay to see what necessarily people are selling Apex content for that's priced that much. Mm-hmm. A lot of it is just accounts that have like pretty much every skin. And, oh, because uh, so we are selling accounts. And in Apex whole. Legends, there's these things called heirlooms, and they are probably what your coworker might have been talking about, where they are in the loot boxes, and I don't even want to know the odds on them. They're probably like 500 to 1 or 1,000 to 1, but all it is is a different melee weapon, which, again, doesn't change like the properties of it. It's essentially... It will like it changes your knife into an axe, but that axe has no benefits to the knife. Like it's not faster, okay. does more damage. It literally is just completely different looking. And I will say they do have cool ones. Like there's an axe. There's the one character gets like boxing gloves instead of their knife. They're they're character specific, different melee weapons. But yeah. it, again, it's all cosmetics. And also, I was gonna say that honestly, Apex Legends, from my knowledge, is one of the last. Uh, Battle Royale games actually has these loot boxes. Fortnite doesn't have loot boxes. Most of the games now have uh, battle passes, which is like you can buy it or not. If you buy it, you get more cosmetics, and if you don't, you'll get some of the cosmetics, but it does show you like it's basically the longer you play, the more content you get out of your pass, essentially. And then those cycle from, you know, every couple of months. And then also what most of the Battle Royale games will do is they'll have a shop which it will be like, hey, do you want to buy this skin right now? It's uh, 20 bucks of the paid currency or something like that. Yeah, I mean, like, there's definitely, like, like, I get it. If, like, if, if you really do put a lot of time into 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 a game, whether it's free free to play or not, like, I always feel like, oh, cool, I want my character to look like this. Here, just take $20 so that way I can give my guy the suit or whatever, I, or the, give yeah. him the, the melee weapon I want. Yeah. And it's, I know that's just not the case. Like, yeah, you have to, like, you have to, in many cases, you have to, like, again, I, I guess Apex, but not so much Fortnite anymore. You have to just take the gamble of, you know, seeing if you get these things in the loot boxes, which is just, uh, it's, it's, hey, it's easy money for these companies, you know? <laughs> Ironically enough, too, I feel like a lot of the Apex cosmetics kind of suck. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I love I that game, but, like, a lot of the cosmetics, I'm just like, this is the, the best skin you made for Bloodhound? Like, really? I could think of better ones. I mean, they've definitely gotten better from the launch, but, yeah. Yeah, I, I personally really wouldn't know. I, I don't play Apex. I don't know any of the characters. But I can imagine, like, the cosmetics just being, like, nothing major. Like, here, now my guy has... Funny ears. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he has six fingers now with this with with this skin. Um, do you need me to transition into a new topic? Because I got sure. One. Yeah, sure. I'm done with the, with the stupid blue box talk. Oh no, no. Of course, that's not. You know, very controversial, hot topic from I don't know 2018 or whenever loot boxes were a big deal. Remember yeah. Star Wars Battlefront Two? Ooh, now that yeah. would. We're we're not going. We're, yeah, we're not diving back into that. Yeah, we're not um, going to the dark side. Uh, but anyways, I was going to talk about uh, my weekend or yeah, weekend briefly mm-hmm. here. Um, I didn't really do a lot, but I did want to talk about the one thing I did do, which I thought was pretty cool. So on Saturday, I uh, asked my girlfriend if she wanted to invite a couple of her coworkers over to our apartment to just like hang out and play mm-hmm. games. I've met them before; they're all like really nice and cool. And uh, we ended up playing a tabletop game, a physical board game, ladies and gentlemen. No screens required, all right? 
classic paper, books, plastic, dice, you know, all Cut. that all that boomer shit, you know what I'm saying? Um but I, it, <laughs> I, I take offense to that. <laughs> I love board games. Um but it was called all right, get ready for this title, it's a mouthful. Betrayal at House on the Hill. <laughs> Not the best title. Now let me explain yeah. the great let me explain the game the best I can. So it is a horror themed tabletop board game. I believe it's up to six players, but I could be uh wrong on that. But essentially what you're doing is you you and your team have entered this mansion and you go room to room depending on how many how many uh, spaces your character can move. All the characters have different stats. I'm not going to go into that too much, but you explore each room and different events happen in each room. Like there's a symbol that will be on each of these tiles. There's essentially a deck of different rooms. So you pull out a, a room and then you pull out a card to read what happened in your room. There would be the, the three different decks are there's an omen, there's items and there's events. And it, it kind of just plays off of that. And sometimes the tiles will also have like special things like, Oh, you need to, roll a six to get out of this room if not you're stuck in there or you take like one damage or something like that but um the goal of the game is well first of all it, it's there's not really a goal necessarily at the beginning other than exploring the mansion you can also go up a floor into the second floor which is its whole own area where you build out more tiles and then you can also go into the basement which is again its own whole floor where they have the basement and the second floor have unique tiles to the ground floor but every time someone pulls an omen card there's a chance for or the player who drew that has to roll like six die and essentially get not get more than how many omen cards were played so if there's one omen card played and excuse me if I'm saying this wrong. I only played this game like twice. I'm also trying to remember the rules in my head. So if there's one omen card drawn, there's this thing called the haunt, which is essentially the point of the game. But it's like to start the haunt, the player who's rolling these dies has to get less than one. And it's like, that's like impossible to do when there you roll six dies at the beginning of the game. Uh, the dice also, I'll add, have... I believe two two numbers, two one numbers, and two blank sides. So it's not a traditional one through six die. Um, I was gonna say like how the how the heck can you roll less than one? Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm guessing it means like get a bunch of blanks. Exactly. Yeah, right. I guess. Okay. But yeah, as you progress, you know, it's again with the omens. The more there are, the easier it is for the haunt to start. So if there's two omen cards, you need to get two or more. Or you need to get more than two. You know, if there's three omen cards, you need to get more than three. Anything less than the haunt starts. And when the haunt starts, the player who activates that essentially becomes the bad guy. And then the rest of the people playing are the good guys. And then each of them get their own special, uh, like, instruction books of what scenario they're going to play out. And we, we only got to see one scenario, but it seemed like there were at least, like, I want to say 60 if not more, different scenarios. And from there, that's where the game actually started, where there was the... I think it was called the Deviant, and then there's also a boss uh, creature that's put into the map. Ours was Death, literally the Grim Reaper. We didn't have to fight him, mind you. We had to play a match of chess Aww. against him, uh, <laughs> which we unfortunately... Oh, no, we did win. We actually beat him. Literally came out to the last player... Because, like, everyone else died, and we had to debuff Death from doing side quests, and then we actually beat him. Literally, probably on the last turn. I think the other character would have died if they didn't beat Death there, but it was really cool. It was... I like the theme. I think it was complex enough, but not that complex. Like, after one round, you kind of would get the gist of the game. And like I said, it seemed like there were a lot of scenarios there and a lot of variety with the even the rooms and the mansion. And I didn't really get to explore the second story or the basement. And we really didn't get too many floors on there. So it, it was pretty cool. There are also a lot of uh, different aspects in the cards. Like some events will put like status effects on rooms. 
where maybe you won't be able to roll a like you'll lose one of your dice or they'll add like a a plus one to whatever you're trying to get or something like that. It, it was it was a lot of fun. Interesting. That was yeah. if anyone's looking for this betrayal at House on the Hill. Very long, and I don't know what this has to do with anything, but it was cool. Um, well, that's pretty cool. I do also want to say that I'm, I, I, I don't know. I've always liked like tabletop games. I mean, obviously, I'm a, I, I'm a big fan of card games. Like, I just, I don't know. There's, there's just something about like holding cards in your hand. I just, it's, it's very satisfying. As I'm sure I agree. You yep. And uh, even board games. I, I do like board games, even though I will. I'll be honest. I don't play them often at all. But like, I remember when I was little, I used to play it all the time. You know, like stormy nights when I was, you know, where, where we couldn't go outside or anything. And even now, like I do, you know, I wouldn't mind playing a game like Monopoly or something every now and again. Uh, a game that I have been playing, I guess, more recently is, um, have you ever heard of the game Catan? Yeah, I always wanted to get into Catan. I never yeah. played it before. It's fun. It, it reminds me of the game of, it. how do I describe this? It reminds me of Risk. I mean, it's it's nothing like Risk where you, you battle people. That game actually was a lot of fun. I, I, I love Risk, but... uh. This is just like a game where, like you, like you, you pick up resources. It's like you, like, like an actual, <clears throat> excuse me, like, 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 like the whole map of like the playing board, and it's random every single time because the, the, all these little pieces that you scatter across the map can all be, you know, rearranged. So the game's always different, and you roll a dice, and if, if like, and there's numbers and all these resources, and and also the, like the numbers also change too uh, during every game. So. Each player rolls a dice, and then w w whatever the results are, people can gather that resource, and they and they and they're given resource cards. And again, I, I don't know why. If the game has cards, I love it. So, and then you can barter with people and say, "Oh, I'll trade you uh, two lumber cards for this brick card." And then basically, you use them to build, ha like to buy houses, or you buy farms, and you you can build roads, and you slowly just keep building your little like uh, your civilization. And then at the end of the game, basically the game ends when you get 10 points. And, like, one house is a point. If you turn your house into a whole settlement, it's two points. And then there's even, like, a little, uh, kind of like the Monopoly chance pile where, like, you get a chance card and it can, it can be, like, anything. You can actually spend certain resources on, like, this. I, f I, f I figure what they're called. Um, but basically it's, like, the same thing as, like, a chance card. And it, it could be anything from, like... There's one that says here, build two free roads, or one is you can look at your opponent's hand and take two cards, or written that. Oh no, no, one of them is called the knight, which lets you like basically do that. You can like move a uh, this burglar piece that if you put it on a person's uh uh like I I, I guess next to their settlement, then you can like look at their hand and take a piece or something like I uh, take a resource. Like it's actually pretty cool, and it's a very competitive game because technically you can like make allies with your you know fellow um board game players and uh it's uh it's fun and definitely like a lot of laughs me and Ama even amanda who doesn't i would never suspect her to be a board game fan like she loves playing that game you always play it over my my, my, my buddy pete's place if, if it's just like like the four of us like me amanda pete and his wife ashley like you know we'll have like, a barbecue and some drinks and then usually we just we'll just wrap up the night playing Catan. it's, it's a really good time i, I would highly ever uh recommend giving it a shot i i me saying this by all means isn't trying to belittle your argument but i've always considered Catan to be like baby's first like tabletop game if you will because it's kind of like complex enough where you have to like kind of learn what you're doing i i don't think you could be like necessarily a master the first round you play it but at the same time it's also not that complex you know like oh it, no it, it, it's it's pretty easy to pick up and play like, yeah i would say it's by no means a game like like strategy is pretty minimal in this you yeah know? yeah yeah i it's, would say it's like where... somewhere in between like a monopoly and pretty much what i just played because yeah, like what i played there's like the bible which is like here's all the rules here's what each tile does here's gotcha. what happens in this very specific situation like what i assume like D D would be i've never played D D, but i would always what like to I... What if I told you I have played D and D before? No, go ahead. Yeah, I know what. I know that's like the uh, the stereotypical. Oh my god, what a nerd! Yes. Dragons, but yes. So uh, admittedly, I was a little like hesitant because like my one buddy was like he told me, uh, yeah, like 
let's play Dungeons and Dragons. And I said, okay. Um, so he, you know, showed me the ropes. And, he, and I'll be honest, despite what you hear, it actually is a lot of fun. It really is. Because it's, it's just like playing like an actual video game, like an RPG, but like everything's on paper, obviously. So, but like, like he says here, I brought my my character and he had it all written out like like this like it's kind of like here's like my resume but it's like this is my character and so far after all these games i've played he's at level 20 and here's what he can do and i'm, I'm like whoa this is like way more than i thought it was like and he's like yeah here so i'll let you make your character and uh i'll start off at my level but then i can help you play and like it was and here's the thing he says it's the game's only as good as the dungeon master and for those for those of you who don't know what that is, basically the dungeon master is the person who literally is like the computer that runs like a video game. Like he says, like whatever the dungeon master says goes. That's just the rule. So if you have a really boring and uncreative dungeon master, you're not gonna have a good time. But like my buddy, my my one buddy who who was sh- showing me how to play the game, like he was just he had like a personality. He was like doing voices and like I mean it, it sounds kind of corny, but like when you're there playing, like he literally just he. Like, fabricated this whole world and like i was i felt like i was playing in it and the, the thing is like it could be anything you want like you, like you don't have to make it always be about dwarves and elves and dragons and stuff like it's obviously that's what you can do but so he says so well, here what do you want to play and we ended up to, we ended up talking about it and we said the scenario is a zombie apocalypse and we're and we're starting off in this town and we're just learning that all the zo- i think because we were big fans of the walking dead so we like that was that. This is when Walking Dead was really popular, and so we literally were playing Dungeons and Dungeons and Dragons, where every like it was a zombie apocalypse, and we're like going into like haunted houses, and like we're creeping in dark rooms, not knowing if there's gonna be a zombie around the corner. And I'll be honest, it was a blast. Like it's, it sounds like uh, I sound like I am like like the biggest like tool right now or nerd, but I'm telling you, it's just ignorance. People who who feel like oh D and D is for losers, like no, it's it, it actually was like a blast. And it's it's been God knows how many years since since I played that with him. But like, man, if ever we, I really had nothing to do, but like, I had someone who someone who knows how to play the game and like know, knows how to be a good dungeon master. I think it actually would be a great time. Yeah, a lot of that is just like you know, good like creative storytelling. Mm-hmm. If I actually knew how to play Dungeons and Dragons, I feel like I would probably be a good dungeon master because I yeah. I. I, guys, I, I've played many, many video games. I even went to school because I wanted to learn how to make video games. I, I, Not a day goes by that I don't think of games that I like think in my head where I'm like, oh, I would make a game like this or like that. And I always like go off in my own little worlds. I'm like, what am I doing right now? I should focus <laughs> on doing something else productive. But yeah, I, I, I would love to try that. That sounds like fun. I don't. I don't belittle you for playing Dungeons and Dragons. It's a lot of people do it. Oh, I know. I'm just, I'm just like kind of like joking because, like, I, I get it. That's like the like you you see it like in TV shows and movies, like oh Dungeons and Dragons, and the guys are like the stereotypical like neck beards and like they weigh. It's like uh, what's that guy on the uh, you know Boogie from YouTube? Yes. Yeah, it's like that's like the, the stereotypical the stereotypical person who plays D and D like in any form of media, and it's like. I'm sure there's there's some there is there is some truth to that, but like you don't have to be like like a loser to play D and D. Like it's again, it's just ignorance. But when you actually do play it, yeah, it really is a blast. So a short story about D and D, real quick. When D and D was blowing up, I believe it was like the late seventies or the early eighties. Of course, the mass media was like, "Oh, don't let kids do this new form of media. It's clearly for Satan and the devil. Oh. <laughs> They're doing, you know, witchcraft yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. So much so that they made a goddamn movie about this stuff. And you can look this up. I've never seen this movie. I would love to, though. It's called The Mazes and Monsters, and it actually stars Tom Hanks. And it's literally about Tom Hanks. Like, I think he plays, like, a match of D&D, essentially, with his friends. I have never... Wow, I've never heard of this before. Yeah, I I learned about yeah I learned about this like a year or two ago. I never watched this yet, but I learned through a podcast. But yeah, he I think he like plays a round of D and D, and he like loves it and gets into it so much that he has like a dream, and he essentially goes on like a, a fever dream slash like sleepwalking, pretending or thinking he's in the game, 
And uh, from what I hear, some bad things happen to him to try to scare people away from, like, playing the game, you know. It, it's ridiculous. I hate... I really hate any type of content like this where people try to shun things because they're like, oh, I don't I don't like this form of media that the children are liking. I need to show them how it's evil. Like, yeah. countless, you know, articles about people saying, you know, violent video games cause mass shootings and you know, all that kind uh, of junk I hate. Like, like I feel like that's, this is essentially what this is, but they made a whole movie about it. So, yeah, wow. maybe one day I'll watch this movie and give my review, but the more you know. Interesting. Yeah, fun little tangent with that. Like, that's actually one ma- major reason why uh, Magic the Gathering, like, the big yes. first competitive card game. Yeah, like, I remember, like, I, I, get, I didn't play Magic as a kid, but, like, I learned this over the last couple of years, like, watching people on YouTube, and, like, they told me how, yeah, like, when they were, like, kids, you know, like, they were maybe a couple years older than me, so they were, like, like, maybe, like, seven, eight, eight years old when Magic came out in, like, 93, 94, and they are saying, yeah, like, how, like, like the, the, the everyone thought if you played magic then it, it, it it's like yeah it's witchcraft it like it summons it's a uh black magic that summons the devil and like because the cards and the cards actually did legit have like blood in the artwork they had uh hex uh pentagram symbols and so obviously over, over time there's been censorship i mean like you know even, even in Oh, there's yeah like i was gonna say you just there. made a yeah. post about like i saw the foolish burial is finally getting the cross art in the tcg yeah. It's only in the TCG yeah. too. It's not like they do that in OCG because they don't they don't worry about that kind of stuff. It's only here in America. Yeah. yeah, it's weird. Even like the Monster Reborn, like the Lost Art Monster Reborn. I think we got that like a year or so ago. So, like it, it's not even like a cross. It's the Egyptian Ankh. I think it's what it's called. Like that. That's simple. Yeah. And so it's like, what does that have to do with like? Yeah. Like the Western world and like religion, it, 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 it's it's literally Egyptian, like, but which is what there's, the game's based on. There's so, a lot of weird yeah. ones. There's like that tragedy card that's just like a guillotine, and then they made it that yeah. like woman screaming. Like, what the hell? Yeah. Why is a guillotine? Why can't people look at that? Like, that was a real thing. I know. I think another big one is like ultimate offering. Like it. Like oh the, yeah. The current the current artwork looks like some like ghost hopping out of like a goblin's body or something. But the original artwork was like like I think like a zombie hand like squeezing a heart they're squeezing blood out of a heart i don't know like it's obviously it's i don't know i, I kind of like the old like crazy i i love here. a lot of the original artwork that yeah. you know we, yeah. we weren't able to get and of course all the sexualized censorship you know oh yeah yeah uh real quick we keep going down like we're like spider webbing or like roots yeah. like we keep going yeah. from tangent to tangent but sorry it always kind of no it's all right that, it's a podcast that's the whole point of this uh, related to what you were talking about, about Magic the Gathering, when I was in middle school, probably when I was like 10 or 11, you know, I, I was at that peak right when Yu-Gi-Oh! came out, like in the mid-2000s, whenever it launched, and I was really into it. Like, I was watching the anime, I bought, like, the toys of the monsters and the characters, and, of course, bought plenty of the cards. And I went to a Catholic school. I mean, that should just stop the whole argument right there. You can kind of see what's going to happen here. And, mm-hmm. uh... We, of course, weren't allowed to play the Yu-Gi-Oh! card game at school. That was forbidden. And uh, they were very against that whole card game. I don't know what information they were, they, they were like, given. Sorry, I stuttered there. Um, but I, maybe it was, like, some of this stuff where they saw some of the artwork that might have got changed or they saw the original artwork and were against it. I remember at one point one of the nuns was, like, telling us like sins that we did and she would go uh has have i ever played card games that worship the devil and like this bothered me like so much because i was so like i don't know if i want to say brainwashed by like the religious uh stuff but i remember i was like so i was at like i think uh it's called the works here but it's kind of like a dave and busters type thing like they have a big arcade and they have like a restaurant but i was out with my mom and we were playing like pool and like I was like really like like uh, I was like a mess about this that this thing she just said because I really loved Yu Gi Oh when I was like a little kid, and yeah. I remember I started like crying like while we were playing like pool, and my mom's like, "Oh my god, honey, like what's wrong?" And I'm like, "Am I gonna go to hell because I play <laughs> Yu Gi Oh? Like, am I a horrible person?" And she's like, "What? What? No! Like, who told you that?" And I'm like, "Do I not?" And she's like, "No, no, you don't even use it like that. It's just a card game. No, stop. They're just like toys." Like I yeah. was so like 
distraught over the fact that I was doing something wrong, even though I clearly wasn't. I was just playing a card game, and I was just like, yeah, look how cool Yugi is. Look how cool the Blue Eyes White Dragon is. Like, oh, man. Yeah, I think... <laughs> I, I believe, believe me, I hear you. Because, like, yeah, in school, they I don't remember the nuns telling me, oh, you're going to go to hell for, like, playing with these. No, but like, that, do remember That's them? not made up. That is 100% true. Oh, no, I believe it. But my thing, what they would do for our school was, like, when they found out that, like, people were, even Pokemon cards. Because, like, I was, in, I was in the third grade when Pokemon cards were, like, took off. And, like, the school hated them. Like, the school absolutely hated Pokemon, and, and this is not even like Yu-Gi-Oh with like all the maybe suggestive artwork and everything, or like or the black magic. This is just Pokemon, like all the colorful little animals and the dragons and the turtles. But like they said, if you ever have your Pokemon cards out, they will be confiscated. And I can't tell you how many times people like or like like my like like my friends they got like their all their stacks of cards just confiscated and thrown in the trash, and it's like. It, it terrified me, and so I never brought my, my cards to school ever again because, like, I didn't want I didn't want, want that to happen. And then when Yu-Gi-Oh came out, that was like three years later when I was, when, when I was in sixth grade. That yeah, like 2002, I think, is when Yu-Gi-Oh came out. Yeah, or when it got popular. Right. In, yeah, when it got popular in North America, and like it was the same thing. Like everyone started bringing their cards to school, and then like, the teachers started freaking out. Like they, now again, like they didn't tell us it was like the devil or anything, but they're just like, Nope. Like if you're, if, if, if you're, if your Yugi mon cards are caught out, like they're getting thrown in the trash and same thing. Like we, maybe for like, like a good week or maybe, maybe like a couple weeks to a month, we were just playing like, like not, not even like during class. It was during recess, you know, like, it's like, Oh cool. We have our free time. Let's play Yu-Gi-Oh or, and, I mean, the schools hated them. It was just like it was it was contraband, basically, <laughs> which is just ridiculous. I, I don't know. I'm gonna humor me here, Mike, and we're gonna. Oh, well, I'm gonna psycho psychoanalyze this. Like, what what is that in schools? Like, what do you think is their main agenda on why they're saying no? You children can't play with these toys, but you could go play with a baseball bat and hit a ball or like, like, do you think, do they think that you playing the Yu-Gi-Oh game or Pokemon is, like, making you an unproductive person? Do they think that's, like, borderline, like, gambling almost? Like, what, what do you think made, like, because this also happened at my school, and we also weren't allowed to bring in, like, you know, even, like, Game Boys. I don't know if you were allowed to do that, but, like, what, do you think, thing. do you think, like, I mean, am I just looking too deep into this? Do you think it was just distractions? Like, you know, they wanted to focus on teaching and make sure you're not playing with your toys, I guess. Like, what What do you think is why they would ban that kind of stuff? Uh, I can't give you the actual answer, but, like, I do think it even falls to the Game Boys. Like, it's not just, like, oh, you, like, card games and the Game Boys or, you know, whatever handheld game I think, you know, that you can play. I think it's because they did find it to be a distraction. Even though it's recess, I think they felt like it's too much of a, of a distraction because then everyone wanted to keep, like, handing cards across the class and everything and talking about it during class. So I'm pretty sure it was a, like, a distraction concern. And I, I, I obviously, I can't tell you how many of my classmates would play the Game Boy during, you know, uh, like under their desk and everything, just play the game. Oh, like, I, I did that. I'm sure I've done before too. <laughs> I'm not gonna act like I'm, I'm I'm innocent. I'm pretty sure I've done that before. But uh, I think it also does kind of the gambling because I know, especially for Yu-Gi-Oh, we would play that if you lost, you had to give your opponent like some cards. Like uh, so, like the technically. Show. <laughs> so I think like yeah, yeah. So I don't think like I mean, and maybe some kids were playing for money. Who knows? I know I didn't. But like, I think there were times where I was like tricked into like saying, "Oh, I'll put up my." Uh, like, I mean, I didn't have anything great when I was little, but like, oh, I'll give you my uh, man uh, eater guardian. bug. Yeah, man, yeah, man eater bug, and then like, and then obviously, I think what happens is, like if a kid did lose and lost his cards, then they would come running to the teacher and cry. Oh, oh, that's like, not fair. That's bullshit. Yeah. But I, th I'm, I'm gonna say like that's my, that's my assumption is that like in many cases they felt like oh now kids are gonna be like you know complaining about other kids taking their cards or their That's toys or the point. game. And so they're just like, like, like they're, they're just saying like, no, it's basically gambling. It, it, it's not happening. And then, and then they just, you know, enforce that rule. And then one, and I will probably say, I bet it's because the school district's probably like, Oh, here we go again. It's magic 2.0. 
or I guess by when the time Yu-Gi-Oh came around, it'd be 3.0, the third big card game. And they're just like, nope, not having it. Like, no card games in school. We don't want the devil being summoned. <laughs> I don't know. Because like, uh, all I'm looking at it is like, I, I'm not going to say everyone needs to be a nerd, but you would think that maybe teachers might want kids doing this kind of stuff rather than who knows exploring their bodies or like well, that, <laughs> doing drugs or something like that well, like i don't I, know I, like they're so I, I, innocent I was say like i was gonna say maybe doing drugs is a, that's a better example like yeah kids here play cards as opposed to you know smoking and stuff exactly I don't know, I'm exploring the what are kids I don't like know. Playing, they're playing with playing with themselves during class i'm yeah. sure i'm sure kids we shouldn't are. talk about kids doing that kind of stuff <laughs> FBI, we we're, were just <laughs> talking about Yu Gi Oh. Don't worry. Oh, I think someone's knocking at my door. It's the FBI. I'm <laughs> Hopefully, it's your parents again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This time I'm hoping it's them. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I feel like I had another point, but we've been like threading this too far. Yeah. Should should we just start the podcast proper? Yeah. Before I mean, bef- before we get yeah, before we get too deep into another tangent. So. Okay. There there'll be more, you know. For, for next time, for next time. Absolutely. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Level With Me podcast, episode 52. You're joined by your hosts. One of them, that's me, Game Bro Corey. Hi. And the other one, Mike, a.k.a. The Collector's Vault. That's you. Say hi, Mike. Yeah, that's me. Hi, guys. I'm Mike. <laughs> I thought Sorry, you were going to say you're... the typical... Uh, hi, Mike. Oh, I was, you know, I was going to, but I was <laughs> imitating. I was imitating how you were like pausing. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Level with, with Me podcast. And uh, yep, I'm Mike, and I'm happy to be back. And I am looking forward to some of the some of the video game news we're going to be talking about. And I actually do have a couple of things that I forgot to talk about last week, so I do oh, have cool. it in my notes. I do have it in my notes that I want to talk about later today. So, uh, but I, uh, yeah, I, I just want to say quick. The only reason I'm pausing is I'm like. We're like almost like a month and a half into this, or maybe two months into like you being a permanent co-host, and like I need to actually write down the proper thing to say because I yeah, I feel yeah, like I've been winging it, time. you know. I need to figure out what I actually that that's why I was like pausing. I'm like, uh, I need to say this and that <laughs> and this, <laughs> getting a little uh, Jeff Goldblumish, you know? Yeah, I th- not Jeff Goldblum. I think it's more like a. What's the guy from Star Trek? Uh, uh, William Corey Shatner, Knight. right? William Shatner, that's it. Yeah. Hi, I'm Corey, and this is Mike. That's kind of. Let me that's kind tell of you how I played a lot of Smash Bros. again this week. Very exciting. I feel like okay. So this is a nerdy podcast. You know, we talk video games, talk Marvel, we talk Star Wars. I have never gave a single interest into Star Trek, even though I know that's like a very nerd culture type thing. But I don't know. I've just never had any interest to watch any of the, like, learn whatever Star Trek is, you know? Yeah, I really can't tell you why I, uh, I, I just never, yeah, I I never gave it a shot. Even just growing up, like, my dad told me when he was a kid, he loved Star Trek, and, uh, I don't know. I think it's just because I was more into Star Wars as a kid. Because as I was growing up, the movies were coming back into theaters, like as like the remastered yeah, version of the nineties. Yeah, I, I so think that, I think Star Wars is like just a little bit more mainstream. I think that yeah, might be it's, why. It was more, yeah, it was more of like it was more of like a cult. Well, not not a cult. It, yeah, I think you said it best. It was more mainstream. Everyone knew Star Wars. Star Trek was like that show that like dedicated people have to get into. Like that was more, I guess, of a like, and, cult thing. And I've heard good things. Like I heard those like original Star Treks are actually pretty good. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, I mean, it's it's an older show, so you have to you know take it with a grain of salt when if you're going to go back and watch it. But like, yeah, I heard good things. My dad said it was a great, like it was awesome at the time. Like it was just, it was. Just another version, like an, another sci-fi show, or, an, or another sci-fi yeah, series. Yeah, those get like into. early, like seventies sci-fi shows where they. Mm-hmm. So, I feel like a lot of the early ones really painted the future like this beautiful, like chrome, uh, utopia. Where yeah. I, I was literally talking to my girlfriend about this like a few weeks ago. I feel like every depiction of the future today 
is like the worst thing ever. Like, oh yeah, the future is going to be mega super fucked. Like it's never looking like a place that's like, yeah, I want to get to that future. It's like, good Lord. I hope I die before I get to the future. <laughs> that's just my opinion though. I, I feel like we need more movies where it's like, no, look, the future is going to be good. We're going to have cool tech. You know, it's not going to be a post apocalypse or robots taking over, but eh, I guess that's not as interesting. Just, you know, oh yeah, we'll still be here. You know, we'll just have slightly better cars and phones. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I'm just thinking about the SpongeBob episode when Squidward was oh, in yeah. the future. That's exactly what I was referencing yeah. when I said like well, Chrome. Yeah. Yeah. Why is everything Chrome? <laughs> <laughs> I am SpongeTron. Yeah, <laughs> SpongeTron. That also a great episode. That's where we got SpongeGar. Remember when SpongeGar was a great meme? That was a good month. The surprised that, caveman sponge. Yeah, that, yeah, that was that was like those popular memes. Bring back know. surprised caveman sponge Bob. That was a great meme. Holy shit. Sponge gar. <laughs> Good times. SpongeBob <laughs> is just a bank of memes and it keeps on giving. There, there's probably a new SpongeBob meme literally today. Someone just made it. And it will probably blow up. I'm actually going to Google it right now. Who knows? Um, you never... But before we get into the news, I don't think I really got to ask you. Did you do anything significant during your week that isn't video games or media related? Uh, well, definitely just spent a lot of my time, as I uh, might have mentioned last last podcast. Uh, I'm pretty sure I mentioned it. Like, oh, Amanda and I got a house, and we, just, we were just doing a lot of packing. Like So... I have so like so many things in my apartment now are just all like missing because they're all in boxes now. But they, like we like we hit the uh, we hit the bathroom and the pan- and the uh, the linen closet, the kitchen, the pantry. It's all just all packed up in boxes. So yeah, I was just doing a lot of packing because you know I, I don't want to waste too much time and and because then because the, then before I know it, it'll be like a week before I move and I just have all this crap laying around. So uh, unfortunately. A lot of my free time has been set to packing. Um, but what else do we do? Um, Aren't you excited for the unpacking process where you spent weeks putting everything in a box and then you have to spend the next few weeks <laughs> yeah. taking it's everything a- out of the boxes? Yeah, it, it, it is the worst. Personally, I, I, I'm i sure... I, this, this, I mean, I, I've moved before from like apartment to apartment, like, but... This is definitely the part that like no one likes. No one likes the packing process, but it has to be done. So you kind of just got to get it over with. Just just get it over and done with. It's kind of like a band aid. Just got to rip it off and just get I, over it. I just say live out of the boxes. Just keep the boxes around. Keep them full. Yeah. Just dig in them. And be like, oh, here's the toaster. There you yeah. go. Oh, what you can do is maybe open. Like if you need something, then go to the box and reach it out, and then put it away when you're done. As in, like put it back. Put put don't put it back in the box, but put it in the house wherever it belongs. So now now things can get a little sticky if you get like a lot of Amazon boxes, and maybe you got to return something. So you might end up returning like your prized like family uh, like Heirlooms. photos or heirlooms, and then you're like, oh, why do I have these uh, this DVD of the B movie? Oops. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That, that's just what came to mind. Yep. <laughs> the best Seinfeld movie ever. <laughs> the, the B movie. <laughs> um, I think. I think. I think we talked about the B movie and then I went to one podcast. But that's just. That's just so funny. Um, I saw. Yeah. I saw a relevant GIF on Twitter of this woman who's just trying to put some honey. It's an actually an old lady. I should clarify that she's just trying to put some honey on like her toast or an English muffin, and then like literally like six police officers arrive with like assault rifles like freeze <laughs> and i'm like oh that's not good right now <laughs> i think it's because they ban honey in the movie or something i don't remember go watch b movie required watching watch b movie i think it's on netflix what a great movie to netflix and chill b movie you'll be laughing so hard that you won't even get to the chilling i hardly doubt that <laughs> I've seen the movie before. It's nah. It's not I, DreamWorks' I, best work. I mean, it's no Shrek. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. I was going to say it's no Shrek, but it is. Uh, it it is a movie. Disappointing, but it is a movie. DreamWorks had a lot of weird three uh, D movies there. 
I, I I don't even know if they exist anymore. I'd say the second animation is now Illumination. It's like Disney. Like someone's always trying to fight Disney. But yeah, like Yeah, that's Dr- a good point. Dreamworks, Dreamworks, like they did Shark Tale, they did Ice Age. I mean they made a few Ice Ages. They actually, like, I don't think that. actually no. I think Ice Age was Fox Studios. Oh, uh, you might be right. Never mind. Which thankfully, which thankfully is Disney. Here's Dream yeah, DreamWorks did uh uh, the ha- oh no, I'm sorry. I guess a recent one is they did How to Train Your Dragon. They did the Kung Fu Panda movies. Oh right, those are popular. Yeah, Madagascar. Uh, I-, I didn't really like those movies. Um, yeah, I agree. <laughs> and uh, oh wait, they- did they do that movie? Oh, they did Boss Baby. They did Trolls. They're fine. Yeah, I, I was gonna say like I'm I. It's funny because I was thinking to myself, yeah, you're right. I haven't heard from G-Works in a while, but no, yeah, they're, they're doing fine. all the movies. They're fine. Yeah, they're- I. Well, agree that I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna be, you know, running to the movie theaters to go watch Trolls. But and even the babe, the Boss Baby, I, that was not a movie that I wanted to watch, admittedly. So, uh, I'm I'm just happy with Shrek and Kung Fu Panda. Those I do I do enjoy. I like Jack Black. He's a funny guy. Yeah, he's got a gaming channel. Maybe we could get him on this podcast. No, that would be hysterical. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't even make... think we would get anything done. I would just ask him stupid questions. Yeah, I'll just keep asking him tenacious deep like trivia and stuff. <laughs> Jack Black, what's your favorite pizza topping? Please tell me it's meatball. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking oh. of movies, I, I just want to start start diving into some news stories here. Uh, All With our our first uh, controversial topic here. Ghostbusters alternate titles revealed. Here's what the 1984 movie was almost called. Uh, so some of the the scratched out names for Ghostbusters include Ghost Stoppers, Ghost Blasters, also Ghost Breakers, and Ghost Smashers. <laughs> Ghost Smashers. Oh my lord. Settle it in Ghost Smashers. <laughs> Who are you going to call? Super Ghost Smashers Brawl. <laughs> now with Sonic. Oh my god. <laughs> Ghost Blasters. <laughs> that sounds like it could be on Pornhub. <laughs> <laughs> the, por- the, the porn version of the uh, Ghostbusters movie. <laughs> what are you going to do with that gun? <laughs> I'm going to blast you. <laughs> I don't know. That sounded like Frank Reynolds for a second. <laughs> no, and then Frank Reynolds is, makes a cameo in the porn. <laughs> of course, Doctor Mantis Toboggan. <laughs> that, that's that's the name. I could <laughs> Toboggan. That, that's all the story was. That I just thought was funny. That's um, interesting. I, I feel like we we talked about this a few podcasts ago. So they're actually rebooting like Looney Tunes. Like HBO Max is going to be making. We wow, yeah, we did talk about this, and it's. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt oh, you. But go I, right I'm, ahead. No, I'm saying I'm just like I'm I'm blown away because yeah, we talked maybe two podcasts ago, and it's just, and I just I yeah, I just uh, had to bring this this news to light because I thought it was relevant. So Looney Tunes uh, on HBO Max reboot will not feature guns, and um, I'm not gonna read the whole article. They're kind of just doing like a anti-gun stance, which I can get, but I just th- this is what I think is very humorous about this. Instead of giving, you know, good old Elmer Fudd his, like, shotgun or whatever, his rifle, they're giving him a motherfucking scythe. He has a scythe now. <laughs> There's literally a picture of him chasing Bugs Bunny with a scythe. I see it. Uh, Wait. The classic the classic hunter's tool, a, a Grim Reaper scythe. Yeah. You know. Yeah, because yeah, after he's done chasing Bugs Bunny, he's going to go into fields and get some get some wheat too i mean that's <laughs> but now you're right that she is like like a legit like grim reaper scythe that's not like the actual like farmers like wheat scythe i oh my God. i don't know what their logic is i mean if it's supposed to just be funny it's working i think it's just random as hell it's it's ridiculous that's how i look at it yeah because, i mean I, I guess to kind of like piggyback of what we talked about in the one podcast like i i think it's funny because like like uh, like like Warner Brothers or whoever they and, may, and maybe they're being forced to do this if they want to bring back the Looney Tunes like because I guess I guess just people think oh well if you have Bugs Bunny 
Or if you have Elmer Fudd chasing Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck with a gun, my child might think guns are cool. I'm going to go shoot my brother or something. Like, you know, like that. that's where all that whole contro- controversy comes into play. But I'm like, but I would think if Elmer Fudd's chasing Bugs Bunny with a scythe, wouldn't, by that same logic, wouldn't your child think, ooh, I'm going to go chase Billy around with the butcher's knife in, in, in no, the kitchen? Like, no, no, it's the Looney Tunes. It's all fake. Come on. What? Scythes don't kill people. Guns kill people. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I can't stand it. And, and, and by my, and also, with, and I know this is not, I'm not trying to justify that guns are cool for kids to have. What I'm saying is, to me, I'd be more terrified of a kid running around with a knife than a gun. You know, like I mean, again, yes, it's I, I can't even like fathom like a little kid like running around with like his, like his dad's gun that he found in like the closet. But I'm thinking like, would you also be terrified if like a kid was running around? It's it's like with scissors, but this is way worse if it's like a butcher knife or something. You know, or <laughs> or or the Grim Reaper. Uh, I can't. I mean, again, it's the same thing as like laser guns, like. Like, like, an actual gun is bad, but if it's a laser gun, oh, well, kids can't get laser guns, so it's okay. Because I'm sure their logic is, well, a kid's not going to get a... Where's where's a kid going to get a scythe from? But the point is, it's, 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 it, it, to me, it doesn't matter. You're showing kids, or you're showing cartoons of, of like, they're running around with, with, like, a sharp object. It, wouldn't you think, by, like, their stupid gun logic, that the kids are going to grab sharp objects instead? But I don't know. I think it's ridiculous. Be very, very quiet. I'm going to weep that wabbit. <laughs> were you waiting to use that all day? Could, I, could I you... was just brainstorming that way you were you well, were going I'll, on. I was listening actually, to you. Don't worry. I'm actually pretty impressed that you came up with that. Th- I'm, uh, thank you. you. Thank you. I, I'll take my check now, HBO. <laughs> um, for 85 cents. Uh, okay, let's... Uh, let. Let, let's let's get back on the road here and talk some video game news. There's actually some video game news this week. Um, so so first of all, here I I have a couple of stories. I'm not going to spend that much time on here, but I just want to say, hey, th- that's a cool. You know, th- these are cool things that these video game studios are doing. Yeah, that's in, so nice. In light of the uh, protests going on in the United States and actually all across the world, it's kind of crazy that other countries are even participating. Uh, but really? there's yeah, but there are some games that are uh, you know joining in with the stance. Uh, in particular, here Call of Duty, NBA 2K at and NBA 2K, excuse me, at in-game Black Lives Matter tributes. Uh, I believe they're both like essentially in loading. Oh well, that, this article here explains it. So in Call of Duty, it's essentially the loading screen will show uh, a screen with their stance on it. You know, it says Black Lives Matter. Our community is hurting. It, it goes on to explain that and there's even a it talks about uh it it's just you know basically they're in support with uh you know black lives matter and stuff like that and then for uh nba here it shows that you can get uh shirts to wear in game that are all free of course just saying like black lives matter and stuff like that uh for avatars i guess and then ea sports takes strong stance against racist usernames especially in nhl games EA Sports has announced that it will take more active stands against racism in its various sports titles, particularly in EA and NHL series. EA is one of many game companies to come out in support of the black community this week, but some viewed the company's statement as being hy- hypocritical. This is because of the rampant racism present in sports games, particularly in the NHL series. The r slash EA NHL subreddit, subreddit excuse me, ha- has been filled with users highlighting instances of racist usernames that appear to have only grown in numbers these past weeks. Especially concerning are the racist usernames that directly reference the death of George Floyd. Yikes, that's horrible to hear. Yeah, NHL not- 20 might be one of the most racist communities I've ever been a part of, wrote one Reddit user in a known in a now locked thread published almost a month ago. The user reported facing off against user created teams and blatantly racist t- names and bemoaned EA's lack of unmeaningful reporting tool. Nobody laughs at them. It's just next to impossible to report this stuff, responded one user. EA doesn't have the systems in place to report to properly do so. Now EA appears to be in the process of developing those tools, and they released a statement. Uh, We're constantly taking action to maintain a culture of inclusive, inclusive inclusion, excuse me, 
Toxic behavior changes and evolves rapidly, and we recognize that we need to do more to actively monitor and remove those individuals who perpetuate racism, xenophobic, homophobic, or sexism, sexist behaviors in our games. Um, you know, just reading this article, we'll say good on them, but why did it just take until now to do that? I mean, that's kind of a, a little messed up in my <laughs> spectacle. Like, shouldn't they have done this? I, I don't know when NHL 20 came out. I assume sometime last year, but it seems like it took them a dang while to actually implement these features, so. Take yeah, that I take guess. that with a grain of salt, everyone. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing it's just something that, that they never thought, like, hey, like, people are going to put stupid names on there. I'm sure there's people who have, like, nothing that's true. on there. Just, like, like, like terrible, terrible and inappropriate things, but obviously just given the circumstances that we're, that we're currently going through right now, I, figure, I, I think they realize, like, hey, let's crack down on this because we don't want to hurt our image, you know? it's Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's all good, you know? Good that they're I'm doing reminded, this now. Yeah, I mean, I think there's many degrees of this. Like, I can think of like when I worked at when I was living up in Reddick at the company I worked at. There's working for the food industry. Technically, they fell on, on my company fell under the food industry. We didn't handle food, but we since we made food containers, they fell under the food industry. I guess the FDA or whatever, right? Yeah, and uh, well, regardless, so you had to wear the PPE that any other food industry would use, and that means like hair nets and face beards and all that stuff. And I let me just say right now, my company, no one wore like you had to wear it. We we wore the hair nets because even though it really made no sense, but it's just because you don't want your hair hair particles falling on right. these containers. But like there was other other forms of PPE that you had to wear, and I promise you, no one was wearing it. It was like people weren't even wearing like the earplugs, which is a big part of it. So like, and, and but then obviously, if there was an audit going on, oh, you, we were all like head to toe covered in PPE. So it's like. It's only when it's sad because, like, I think it's not just it's like whenever it matters, that's when yeah. people start stepping up a little bit, you know. That's true. Yeah, people are the worst. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm not trying to not trying to justify anything. I'm just thinking like this is just one of those other examples that I've you know I've seen before. No, no, good point, and I agree that that has definitely happened at my job too, where it's like, yeah, now it gets changed when something kind of crazy happens, you know. Yeah. Um, and last to wrap up these like stories, uh, GTA Online and Red Dead Online will temporarily close to honor George Floyd. I just think that's that's pretty impressive considering how big you know both of those games are. So that was pretty cool that Rockstar did that. That's really all I got for those stories. Yeah, you know. I mean, I, I don't mean to sound insensitive, but like, is it because these games feature? black men like why i mean i'm not trying to say like this is wrong i'm just curious like why like like what's the significance of closing the the games i i think it's just to spread like awareness their Uh, their tweet says black lives matter to honor the legacy of george floyd today uh well this already happened it's not today uh june 4th is when it happened uh they'll be shutting down access for a certain amount of times Okay, I guess um, it's kind of like it's kind of like a moment of silence, like similar to that. Maybe that's kind of how I'm, uh, again. I'll, I'm not trying to like you know like oh this is wrong. I'm just saying like oh I'm I'm just curious like like how does this spread awareness? But I guess I, I guess I, I guess it does. They they also uh, posted as a follow up tweet to that following the memorial. We hope you will join us in further honoring the many victims of America's racial injustice by supporting their families, black owned businesses. Those marching on the streets and coalitions through or- the organizations listed here, and they have a link for, you know, where you could donate to help those causes. So, yeah, I I, I think it was just mostly to spread awareness, I guess. If if people haven't heard about this, even though I would say it's probably at least the second biggest thing going on in the world. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I um, had no idea that. It, I mean, I, I figured like other countries knew about it. Like, I didn't think it grew to this degree that like other because co- i mean i figure like i figure we're not the only country that has problems with racism i mean but i didn't know that this was spreading like o- o- around the whole world like how how significant this is you know but, yeah yeah i think there were protests in japan i know there were multiple in different countries in europe like germany uh wow England. i did not know that yeah yeah it's it's, well, it's crazy yeah i mean i just pray that it's all for the best Spreading awareness is a good thing. I'm not saying like it's bad. I, I, I'm. I think it's good that this is being spread. I just. I. I guess I'm just impressed that. Oh wow, it's not just happening here in our own country. It's 
happening all, all over the world. That's a uh, pretty pretty shocking. Yeah, in a good way. In a good way. <laughs> yeah, this, want... this stuff does need to be brought to light, and I mm-hmm. it is good that you know people are protesting. I'm actually going to go to a protest uh, on Friday, so yeah. Oh, okay. Well, be safe. Oh, don't worry. I will. <laughs> I'm going to be getting that good goods. You know what I'm saying? We're going to be looting. <laughs> oh gosh. I'm sorry. That was I, just I, a joke. I, that was distasteful. I know. I know. I'll, I, I'll admit I, it. I figured you meant like you were going to a peaceful yeah, protest. Pe- yeah, I'm not. I'm not looting. I yeah. I'm just gonna stand there and yes, peacefully protest. I would, but, but would as, never loot. But as you walk by that that GameStop that ripped you off for the for the used games you sold to them, oh, you're getting some you're getting some ideas, aren't you, Corey? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I might. Who knows? <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. We do not promote any rioting or looting. Yeah, here yeah. On. Don't don't steal, Blue guys. Rioting. Come on. Peaceful protests are cool. Go do that. How how do I trans? Eddie, how do I transition out of that? I I, I think <laughs> we just do. A, I think we just do a hard transition. Just say, all right, let's talk. To, let's go to the next topic. All right, clean <laughs> cut. We're wiping that. Mm-hmm. Uh, more video game news. Hey, everybody. Hey, uh, video games are cool. Uh, speaking of cool video games, PS Five reveal event officially rescheduled for June eleventh. So uh, I I believe we mentioned last week that this got postponed. Uh, because, you know, Sony said that there were more important voices, of course, talking about the protests going on. Well, I guess uh, one week later, it's, you know, perfectly fine to show the stream now. Uh, mm-hmm. So that'll be June 11th. I believe that's Thursday. Yes. At uh, 1 p.m. Pacific time or 9 p.m. BST. I don't even know what that is. Is that British, British standard, standard time? time. 4 yeah. p.m. Eastern time. That's what we need to know. And that means I can watch it. Maybe I'll even live stream like live reactions to this event. That'd oh, be pretty cool. That'd be, that would be cool. I only did that once before, but it was neat. I think I did a Nintendo Direct. But yeah, I'm very excited to see whatever this is, how much they're going to show, you know, games console wise. I mean, they've been very quiet. So I, literally anything that they show will be cool, even though I feel like they're going to show very little. <laughs> But who knows? Curious. We don't know, though, because if you think about it, this would have been the week, Mike, that E3 would happen. So this could be a significant event. We don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I have a feeling that they're going to like many of the gaming companies are going to be using like the next maybe like, the next month to like to do things to do like digital events, kind of like this, you know, start revealing things. I know Nintendo's not doing anything crazy, which is a little upsetting, but. Um, I mean, they'll, they they'll could come surprise around. Us. Yeah, they yeah, could they literally can... drop on like Ju- July first, and it's like, yo, here's what's coming out this holiday season. We're all like, whoa! Yeah, Ugh. yeah, guys. Here's Prime Four. Here's a uh, gameplay of stopped. Breath of the Wild Two. Yeah, and then, oh, and then my heart stopped because <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> um, yeah. Speaking of some more video game stuff, EA PC games have been added to Steam. EA Access coming soon. To everyone's surprise, with no official announcement from EA, many of the company's PC catalog is now available for purchase on Steam, including Dragon Age 2, Crisis 3, Unravel, Mirror's Edge, Catalyst, and Need for Speed Heat. In addition, these games are also available at steep discounts. Games like Dragon Age Inquisition and Mirror's Edge Catalyst, previously only available on EA's Origin service, are 50% off right now, while others like Need for Speed Heat have a steeper 60% cut. Many EA titles have already been on Steam due to launching before EA began to b- began its origin exclusive approach, excuse me, are also discounted, including Need for Speed, Hot Pursuit, and Dragon Age Origins Ultimate Edition at 75% off, and the original Mirror's Edge cut by 90%. That's crazy. Um, so to add some significance to the story, I, it appears that EA is no longer going to be maybe having exclusivity on their launcher. I feel like a lot of game companies besides like Epic are kind of loosening their, oh, we're going to be the the new launcher, you know, because I I feel like every company almost wants to be like Steam or get some of the revenue from Steam. But I I don't think it ended up working with a lot of these companies, you know, Bethesda has their own launcher. Ubisoft has their own launcher. I have tons of these installed for like one game. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not saying I support monopolies, but I just don't. I, I, I think it's better to do stuff like this where you give more people more options because i hate to say it but 
goddamn Origins is not a good uh, launch system. It, it's kind of bad. <laughs> but uh, again, it's it's just cool to see that you know more games like this is going to give people more access to games essentially. Also, it's cool that all those discounts are going off. I mean, if you want to get any of these EA games, you know, go check them out. They're all, I guess, dis- discounted right now. So that's cool. Um, So we have this story here. I actually didn't read this one, so bear with me here. Sony filed $3.5 million for misleading Australian consumers. Sony I believe you mean fined. They're fined $3.5 oh. million. Oof, That's much worse. <laughs> what, what did I say? Excuse me? Filed. Okay, yes. Sorry. Yeah, yeah they were right. fined. You're correct. 3.5 million. The company has been ordered to pay this amount in penalties for making false and misleading representations regarding Australian consumer law rights. Uh, the court case that led to the settlement involved a series of consumers who contacted Sony over a game that deemed fault they deemed faulty. They were refused refunds for two reasons. The game was purchased digitally and it had been 14 days since they made the purchase. These responses from Sony do not align with Australian consumer law. So the case went to court. Jeez. (laughs) Another breach of ACL came as Sony told a customer that it could not provide a refund unless the game developer authorized it, and told another that the refund would have to be issued using digital currency only usable on on the PlayStation Store. Yikes. Consumer guarantee rights do not expire after ad digital product has been downloaded and certainly do not disappear after 14 days or any other arbitrary date claimed by a game store or developer. Reads a statement from Rod Sims, chair, uh, chair of the ACCC. When did I put too many C's in there? It's ACCC. Three, right? Did I do <laughs> it again? Okay. <laughs> what Sony told these consumers were false and does not reflect the consumer guarantee rights afforded to Australian customers. Uh, yeah, that's not good. Bad bad Sony. Slap them. Slap them with that money bill. <laughs> Slap them with a couple of Benjis. Yeah. I, I mean, good for Australia. I'm glad they have those policies. I Who knows if it's like that elsewhere around the world, but th- those are some good legals. Yeah. Helps, to, helps protect them, you know, from any kind of like, well, we'll say fraudulent, but just, you know, sketchy business. Yeah, so that that's good. Not sure if there's any like U.S. law that could help you out with that. Who knows? Yeah, if you guys want to read into all the legal of the all the legals of the United States, uh, you can go do that. Just search it on Google, I guess. I don't know where you find that. Do you go to your town hall? Do you go to Washington D.C.? I I have no idea. I Maybe. just I just live in this country. I I, I don't know its hmm. laws. I just eat and live here. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of a nothing story, but this is a podcast, so that's pretty much what we talk about. New look Xbox store design leaked. So there's a picture. Uh, how did this leak? It's probably Twitter, right? As reported by Thorot Twitter user, uh, Win Community posted the first screenshots of Mercury, which is a store app for Xbox One that is currently running on Windows 10. Um, so I, this is going to be hard for me to describe considering I don't really have a good comparison because I haven't really ever used an Xbox one like a, a few times. I, I think this infrastructure looks better or the, the dashboard, if you will, it does look like a PC though. I, I definitely see the PC aspects because you can launch a micro or Xbox on your windows. And I have done that before, but basically there's just like a, a long tile on the left side of all your different options at the top it's like your account and there's like a, a search looks like there's like a deals and then games and i think there's like a movie and i i don't know what the other two boxes are and then it looks like there's like a favorites and your settings and then uh, system settings at the bottom or your home um, but essentially in the store or this games menu there's a featured which has three big tiles one primary and two smaller ones and then there are four smaller titles at the bottom for search, top free games, top paid games, and Game Pass. I will say this interface does look very clean, where everything I saw from the Xbox One interface always looked very messy. And a lot of rectangles or boxes where I, I feel like they didn't need to have that many. This this seems kind of clean. 
See, I, I, I feel bad because unfortunately, I really can't comment. Just yeah, I don't really have any, anything to to compare it to. So, uh, uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> fortunately, I can't really comment on this. I mean, sorry. I wish I had something to say, but I don't. <laughs> Do you, I feel so ashamed. Does the picture look good to you? Yes or no? It does. I mean, I, 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 the picture I'm looking at is the Ori and the Will of the Wisps little yeah. picture, and yeah. uh, that's pretty cool. You heard it here first. He likes the Xbox Series X interface. Yeah. There you go. It gets, it gets the collector's vault seal of approval because it looks cool. S- stamp that on the box of the, the user interface. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is pretty neat. Uh, Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning announced for August 2020. <laughs> Isn't that the most ridiculous name you ever heard? Re reckoning. So there's yeah, there's some backstory here where this is a game that THQ Nordic bought, and they've been um, hang on, I gotta look for the meme now. They've been putting out like a bunch of remasters right now, and they all put the like phrase "re" in front of the word, and there are some funny comparisons because there's like they did like the hang on, I gotta find this now. I gotta find this meme. Because they did okay, so they they made their they're making this new uh, SpongeBob game, or it's just a remaster of an older SpongeBob game, Battle for Bikini Bottom. Oh and yeah, the rehyd- rehydrated. rehydrated. Yep, yep. And there's two more. I gotta find the other two. Oh, um, oh wait, this is not it. Damn it! I wish I had the meme and all the other ones because they just they're essentially just putting re in front of. I, I think it's funny. <laughs> This is a horrible example. I should really have these things planned out. But yes, it's the, el- the Elder Scrolls. I was gonna say the Elder Scrolls re Skyrim. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> basically the meme. Yes, that doesn't make sense. Um, but yeah, this I don't really have too much to say. I never played this game, but I thought it looked really cool, and I'm glad they're bringing it back. It's like a action RPG. I, I've heard a lot of good things about it. You know, it, it's very story driven. A lot of content. I believe, yeah, it includes all the DLC, which is nice in the remaster. Um, it looks good. I actually really want to check this out. I always thought this game looked really cool. Yeah, it kind of looks like a really stylized uh, uh, God of War or something. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of like the Fable games. I don't know if you ever looked at any of those. I do saw the Fable those, games. But that, that's what it kind of reminded me of. Like a little, a little more mature Fable. And uh, I, I did like the Fable games in the past, so... Cool. Uh, that's why I want to check this out. Um, another another story here for you. Konami sets up a Western third-party game publishing division. Konami, the company behind such games as Metal Gear Solid and Silent Hill, you ever heard of those games, has announced it has launched a new third-party publishing unit in the West, and that is first that its first game, Skeletac, Attack, is available now. Speaking to GamesIndustry.biz, Konami's senior brand and business development manager, Richard Jones, discussed how the new innovate initiative will focus on internal studios that will build games designed to f- succeed in Western markets. The drive is towards publishing more titles for Western studios, so the focus for the European team is domestic audiences. Obviously, everyone knows Konami. We have studios and teams in Japan. We have many well-known, well-beloved IPs. They're all being managed and locked after, but looked after, excuse me, by our studios in Japan. And what we're looking for is complementary titles to build the portfolio with things that perhaps are new to Konami, Western titles for Western audiences. I think this is significant because Konami really doesn't make that many games nowadays. They I was, a- was, was going to say, like, they're known for some great, you know, um, IPs. Castlevania, the Metal Gear yeah. series are big, but I, I have a feeling like, 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 especially after they lost Hideo Kojima, like, do they do they just like sit down in their boardroom and think, so do we know how to make games or like, like does anyone here know how to make games? Because like, they, I, I don't know what they're doing. Like, they have so many IPs that they don't really, like, you know, they they just don't utilize. Like, I think even Contra wasn't there like a Contra game that came out a couple like a year or so ago. Oh but it was, like, yeah, a, but it was like a really like. It wasn't like it wasn't like an anniversary collection. I could have swore it was just like a weird little like. It was really weird. Yeah. It was like uh, they did so they did an anniversary collection of Contra and Castlevania like uh, maybe a year or two ago, which was cool. But yeah, they they made like a new Contra game, and it was like it was very realistic, like the graphic style. It was like 
a top down like shooter. You yeah, actually had even, ammo. You didn't. Like, yeah, like it, it even looked like Contra. I'm, exactly. I'm, it was kind of like it was like, oh, this looks interesting. And then you and then you saw it, it's Contra. I'm like, wait, what? This, this isn't Contra, but yeah, it was. I, I don't know what they were thinking. Even yeah. Castlevania. Like, I'm surprised they don't do like more modern cat. Like I, even like modern Castlevania games. Like yeah. Like that's exactly what that uh bloodstained bloodstained game was kind of going for, like a modern yeah. Castlevania, literally made by the guy who made those old Castlevania games. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping with this they'll have more incentive to make games again. Especially that yeah. says Western, that's that's us. It'll be mm-hmm. cool stuff that we like. How yeah, did you yeah. not even point out I'm sorry to cut you off, but how did you not even make a comment about Yu Gi Oh? I was about to say, like, that's all, that's all they do now, is, it seems. Like, it seems like that's their focus is just Yu-Gi-Oh. And I was I was going to get a comment on that. I was just waiting for the right time to, to jump in and say, like, that that's all they're doing is Yu-Gi-Oh. Wake up, Mike. A loot box and a pack of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. They're not that different. <laughs> it's the exact same thing. I'm not going to argue with that. It is the exact same thing. <laughs> Especially nowadays. Like, dude, you won't believe how much some, some cards are nowadays. There's a... Oh, here's something crazy. They've done this for the very first time ever. Ever, they are reprinting a card in a main set booster set. Oh yeah, I think I'm you were sure. telling me about this. Yeah, like how basically there, the, there's like a new version of. They're not called the ghost rares because the ghost rares were like the big like lottery card, and there was it was usually always the cover card for you know for for our listeners you don't really know. But now Yu Gi Oh has a new version of like a lottery card where it's like five, four or five cards in the given set are given like this incredible rarity bump, and there's like. One of the five, one of these five, so you, you like, the, like you're not guaranteed a certain a specific one. It's one of these five in every two cases, so it's even harder to find than a ghost rare. And one of them for the most recent set that came out is a Feck Veiler. This is the very first time they've ever reprinted a card in a main set booster because, like, you know, usually when they have their little side sets is when they do reprints, but never in the main boosters. And now a Feck Veiler has been given like. It's called the Starlight Rare. I, I, I think I, I think we did talk about this, but like so, if 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 you don't remember, you can Google it. Starlight Rare Effect Veiler, and they are it like kind of like what we were saying earlier about like the loot box system is like you can get like skins or whatever that are worth like five hundred bucks. Like I think the, the Effect Veiler right now is easily like a, like a six or seven hundred dollar card. And That's it's, insane. Uh, it is insane. But anyway. Back to the, uh, back to the news. Yeah, yep, you're accurate. I'm on TCG Player. Yeah, the the lowest one is six fifty. That's near mint first edition. Yeah. Yeah. All the other ones are, are going up. There was like, like the first set introduced it. I think the one the one card is like I think they're going for over a thousand right now. It's and I was I was actually tempted on on investing in them, like putting in like maybe buying a couple. Some of them some some of the lesser ones were under a hundred. And then I thought, man, I should just buy these. And of course, now they're all even the even the worst ones are like two hundred dollars minimum. So oh, it's damn. like, yeah, that is pretty cool. It's cool. I mean, it's funny because ghost rares were never that. Now, now ghost rares are worth a lot of money. But like, even when the ghost rares were coming out, like they were never worth that much money. It was just uh, the, the the Yu-Gi-Oh the whole card market is insane right now. I've said I've said before on the podcast, and I'm just reiterating like it is, uh, it's bonkers to say I, the least. I don't mean to divulge into this Yu-Gi-Oh talk here or even divert from our video game news here, but yeah, I I, I think it's really wild too because again, I'm getting a little in the weeds of Yu-Gi-Oh here and the I guess competitive aspects of it, kinda. But like, people don't even understand like how much we're kind of getting like fucked over here in the United States. Like, I feel like in the uh, in Japan. Like, a lot of their sets, the cards are way easier to get, it, it, mm-hmm. it appears to me. And, like, even, like, a lot of the things which, you know, at the end of the day, like, this is just prettying up your Yu-Gi-Oh, essentially. Like, oh, you get the prettiest version of Effect Veiler, you know. Mm-hmm. And that varies from person to person because there are different types of rarities. But that's really all it is. And, you know, I I forget where I was going with this. I, I feel like I was going to say, like, that... Well, you mentioned how, like, North America especially gets, yeah. like, really- we have been getting screwed in the side set like i'm sure you remember when again for, for, the, for the listeners who don't know like there was a set that came out it was called the secret forces and it brought back 
ritual monsters, which were usually always a pretty bad type of monster in the game. It basically brought the Necros, which are like the best cards ever seen in Yu-Gi-Oh at the time. I'm sure Corey, you, you remember the the Necros craze, like. And there were cards that, like, you could actually buy an entire case, which is 12 boxes, and you might get one of one of these cards, if you're lucky. And it was the, uh, the I think it was, there's, there's, like, three short prints, and they were all Necros cards. And, like, like two of them, you, you, you might get two in a case, and then the other one, you might get one in a case. Bro. And these are, and these are, and two of those cards were cards, you, uh, you needed three of them. It was Brianak and Valkyrus. He had a play you the deck. You needed three of those cards. Yeah, uh, bro. I was gonna say I lived that because uh, I bought a whole case of that set, and then I also went to Walmart and I ended up buying um, like twenty four of the individual packs, which That's is a true. horrible idea. You never, if you play the any competitive card game, never buy those like individually wrapped like packs that you get in the store with like the cardboard back. Those are yeah, horrible. The yeah, ratios you want to buy a whole box or a whole case of boxes if you want to try to pull cards and actually get money or your value back. But yeah, I bought, like I said, 24 of those individual blisters and one whole box of the Secret Forces. And yeah, I I just lost so much money. That was probably mm -hmm. the worst burn I ever had from Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. And the funny thing is, it got... I don't want to say it got worse, but it was the the last couple reprint sets we've been getting, it's it's crazy because the North American prints have been the ratios are ridiculous because like there was the most recent set that came out, it was like a hidden arsenal set just like the Secret of Forces, and again like there are some cards like you're like getting like one per case, and these are cards like everyone wants to play you like you want it was, there was like a zombie deck there was a rock deck I, I think I might have talked about this. And some of these cards were going for like over a hundred. I think the one card was going for well over like one hundred and fifteen dollars, which is shocking because Brianak was like like one hundred and seventy five of them at their highest point. But like, the point is like it's one per case. But like, they're, they're, they're just not enough of, the, of these things to go around. But then, oh, and then another one was like, well, I think I mentioned how they are bringing back duelist packs, and like there was a duelist pack that had so many good. Like, there was like a dark a dark magician card that everyone ever at that. Everybody wanted. There was a hero card that everybody wanted. I think even, even in the previous duelist pack, there was it was a, it was all about heroes, and there were two short print hero cards. And all of these cards that I'm talking about, these were like one to two per case. Again, it's but then over in Europe, in 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 Europe, the ratios were balanced. So like they they, they like there were no short prints. And they were taking the Europe. The European market was really like making an impact on on the North American market because, like over here, where like these cards are just not existed, and they were like sh they were well over like a hundred to one hundred and twenty five dollars a card or a copy. The European market's like, yeah, we we have plenty of these. And granted, they're in all different languages, but like it, it just shows it goes to show like clearly the North the North American print runs are altered, and I just don't understand the logic behind. It. You know, like I don't know. I, I don't know if I want to speak on every product, but I feel like that's kind of a a, a common trend. And I, I don't even know if this is global or just in the United States, but you can see this, like, not just in Yu-Gi-Oh. This, this is not everywhere, you know? It's essentially what loot boxes are. Mm -hmm. I mean, even to get it, r very realistic, sorry to cut you off, but my, my girlfriend works at Starbucks, and they just got these cups that are, like, color-changing, you know, when you put a cold or hot drink in, they'll change from one color to another. They didn't get that many of those cups, and, like, everyone fucking wants these cups, and I'm like, really? I mean, they're cool, but they're, it's it's just a plastic cup, but you, you these were, these things are really hard to find, and they're going, like, 20, 30 bucks for just, like, a, a plastic Starbucks cup that oh realistically, gosh. like, probably only cost them, like, maybe a dollar or less to make, like, I, I just don't understand. I don't know if they're doing it so, to make this artificial inflation. Maybe it's almost like a label thing. Like, ooh, I got the exclusive color changing cup or ooh, you know, like I, I kind of hate that kind of stuff. I even feel like Nintendo even kind of did it a little bit with Amiibo. Like, why would they send like one Marth Amiibo with like 20 Mario? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's it. It, it is. It, it's fabricated to be like that. Like they personally do make these like whatever it is 
like anything that's a club, it's, it's basically ending collectible. They will purposefully yeah. give certain things a short run, and it becomes supply and demand, and that's why these they will demand like ridiculous prices. It's just, but and I, you're right, it, it's not just Yu-Gi-Oh, it's everything. I I feel like with a lot of this stuff too, like I don't even understand how the companies necessarily like. Is it just because people are talking about their item? Because how I would interpret it at the end of the day is, aren't the companies not really gaining anything of it? Because, like, you know, it's scalpers who are like, oh, I'm going to wait all night to just get, like, 16 of these items and then go sell them online because I know they're only going to have 20 at the store. You know you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I, I never knew. Like, how, like, what do they benefit from? Even, like, when it comes to, like, like the... Uh... I guess the, the 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 digital loot box is different because basically that just makes people try it more and more and more. But like, yeah. in, but like it comes like to like any kind of like any kind of trading card game like Pokemon, Magic, Yu Gi Oh. Like, what does Konami get from this? Where like, oh, there's only one one of these cards per case. Like, yeah, but like what? Like, I guess technically it makes people buy more cases because well, if there's only one per case, I have to buy more cases to get them. You know, so maybe they do get more money out of it in the end. Because technically, Konami is not really affected by the secondary market. I think that's that's the, that's the thing. Because technically, when it comes to us, it's the secondary market of saying, "Okay, this card's worth so much money." Like for the listeners, it's not like the companies that make the cards sell them in, sell them individually. Actually, I think Magic was was actually starting to look into that, like Wizards of the Coast. But that'd be interesting. Yeah, it's kind of strange. But like, I know I'm pretty sure for a fact, Pokemon and and uh, like the, like Nintendo and. Uh, and Konami, like, yeah, like you, like you can't just say, oh, like I want to go on their website and buy a card. Like, no, like they sell it to the distributors and they sell it to the card shops and the WalMarts and all that. So, like these crazy price prices that we're talking about, that's all secondary market. That's like to us, the consumer, and to and to you know vendors and and scalpers, as Corey mentioned. Like, so it's I'm not. That's where I get kind of surprised to think like like these crazy prices. Like, like Konami that doesn't see like. The one the one hundred and fifty dollars that you spend on that one card, they don't see that. They just see product sales, you know. So, my I guess I this is to wrap this up. I guess when they do cause these supply and demand instances, it just causes more people to buy the product because they know. Well, if I buy one case, I will get that one card. So, and then and then they'll just try to sell the rest of the product to make up for it. I guess that's kind of the logic. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, sorry, that was a bit of a long tangent. <laughs> uh, no, you're fine. I, I think I had something I was going to follow up on, but I forget now because I got a notification on my phone, and it was like the th- it was a thumbnail for a YouTube video. It's like, oh, suggested for you, and it was like Sakurai discusses something about the new uh, Smash like season two fighter pass, and I got super hyped. I'm like, oh my god, did they just like shadow drop like an announcement about like the arms character or whatever? But it it was nothing. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, but no, no. Sorry, I got hype. But speaking of video games, we should steer back into our, our video game news stories here. Don't worry, we only have a couple more. Um, but no, that was a good talk. I, I, I mean, it's true. What, what more is there to say other than speak the truth, brother? Yeah, we'll talk more about Yu Gi Oh stuff in the future. I'm sure. It, it, I'm sure you get. I'm sure you you get a kick out of it. Um, but yes, uh, Sega announces palm sized game gear micro consoles. So there's been a big trend in the past few years about these micro consoles. I think Nintendo honestly started it all with the NES classic, which again, <laughs> honestly, right back around was a kind of artificial because they didn't produce as didn't many, many, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I remember I was looking into getting one of those things when they were like hard to find, but that that's another story. Anyways, a set of palm sized micro uh, excuse me, let me start that over. A set of palm-sized Game Gear Micro consoles have been revealed as part of Sega's 60th anniversary celebrations. The Game Gear Micro is currently only available to pre-order in Japan and will launch on October 6th. A time of ri- At the time of writing, there has been no news of a Western release for the device. The console has a 1-inch screen and will arrive in four color schemes, each with a different set of four games preloaded. Oh, that's kind of garbage. That means you literally have to get each of the different games to get all, or each of the different consoles to get all the games. Get all the games. Don't uh, you love my live reactions to these stories where I never screen them and I'm just like, oh my god, this is horrible. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny. Like, oh, oh no. Yeah, like I just learned this and I'm like, actually, that's horrible. I mean, yeah. I, I, I will say this. 
and this is a ridiculous thing, but I'm a huge fan of different colored consoles. I loved when there were like four or five different game cubes you could get, like the spice orange, the the yeah. silver, the the classic purple. I mean, I I get why publishers don't or console makers don't do that anymore because then it's just like the one that no one wants is always on the shelves. But anyways, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, that that's kind of lame that they're literally all like different. They each have different games. Although I do think these things are really cool because, yeah, they're like just tiny little handheld things with a kind of nice one inch screen. Also, I yeah. will say I hope these do come to the United States or even like Europe at some point. I'm not a big Sega fan. I've never played, honestly, any of the games that are on this. I've never even had the game gear, but, you know, I, I think it's important to talk about this kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, looking at the games that are preloaded into this, I promise you right now the black one's going to be really sold out because this is the only one that has Sonic the Hedgehog on it. The blue one apparently has Sonic and Tails, and I promise you that's not as good as Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> so, uh, what is it? Yellow has, like, the Shining Force games, which I, I think those are JRPGs. I could double check that. Maybe they're shmups. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I, I again, don't, oh, no, I'm, don't, don't, RPGs. Yeah, don't take my, take, don't take my word as, uh, as the Bible, because even like Gunstar Heroes, I've heard of. But I just feel like when you think of Sega, it, even for playing these like little handheld games, I think I just feel like Sonic, like one of the go-to games. And if only one of them has it, like that's that's going to be the hard to come by console. And I bet they're going to make less, kind of like what we just what we were just talking about. They're going to make less of them. So look, I I'm sorry. I know that there are a lot of Baku Baku animal fans out there. So don't let me belittle that. That comes on the blue version. Okay, just letting you know. Baku Baku Animal. That's a very popular game. Good to know. I've never heard of Baku Baku Animal until today. <laughs> okay. I, can't, I, I also have never heard of it before. So. <laughs> uh, speaking of things people have never heard of before, Pokemon. You heard about this, this new trend? Well, uh, this also kind of circles around to a story we talked about earlier. Pokemon gets a Looney Tunes style animation. The this Pokemon company, yeah, has released its first Poke Tune animation, a new short in the style of classic Looney Tune cartoons. The Pokemon Kids TV YouTube channel recently posted a four minute animated short that follows the slapstick escapades of Scraggy and Mimikyu in a humorous episode titled Chase the Beans. That's a great name, by the way. I actually want to go check this out. Yeah, it looks really cool. It's got that, like, cuphead, you know, like, 50s, like, all... like classic yeah, cartoon animated yeah. style. It's really yeah, neat, I'll, actually. I'll, I'll, yeah, definitely, like, the, 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 like the cuphead is exactly what came to my mind as well. Yeah. Or just, like, the old school, like, you know, like, Looney Tunes stuff. I and, guess even, I guess even, like, old school Disney cartoons as well kind of have this similar style. Yes, and it even has, like, the title card, you know, like, mm -hmm. that's nicely hand-painted or whatever. Yeah. I, I, I do really appreciate this kind of art style. It's very nostalgic for me. Great, not saying I grew up in the 20s, but, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, even growing up, yeah. they, the car Nick Lodian and Cartoon Network would have these cartoons on repeat, so it's a uh, it is nostalgic to me as well. So that's kind of cool. I forgot to point this out, but we are around the end of the news cycle, and that was a Nintendo story. You know, here at the Level With Me podcast, we love for Nintendo. Indeed. And uh, what better way to wrap up than to again talk about more screenshots from that there uh, Nintendo Land over in the oh, Japan? Boy, can't wait to see these. Um, so. In this uh, cycle of screenshots that we have, there are eight here. There's really, like, only one or two good ones. The other two, or the other, like, six or whatever, are mostly from, like, other parts of Universal where you can kind of see some of the borders of the theme park. But but you yeah, have this, this first... Highway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that one's actually one of the better ones, believe it or not. But anyways, you have this first picture here, which really shows a lot of the life in the Nintendo land. You kind of see, like... There's kind of the the top of Hogwarts or maybe a part of uh, Diagon Alley. It's like the snow and the roofs and stuff like that. Yeah. And then, but you can kind of see the main like gist of the park where you can see multiple different Mario enemies: the Piranha Plant, a Thwomp, a Goomba. You can see some coins that are like spinning. There's a shell. There's a a, a mushroom. I see, mushroom. I see all the question blocks. Oh. The pipes. Oh, and oh, this yeah. reminds me that last week I was saying how I think I saw some of the snow area, and look at that. It's the, the snow area right there. I was right. Yeah. Oh, oh my lord. I need to click on that article I just sent you. I accidentally just exited out of it. 
Um, oh, mm-hmm. the second screenshot's pretty cool. It's like a pretty it's detailed. Castle. Yeah, it, it's actually really neat looking. Like yeah. all the 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 how do I put this? Like the just the rock brick of like mm-hmm. building a castle, kind of like the metal, like different shades of gray around like the top yeah. of the towers and yeah. even it's like. Just, it- Go ahead. It has Belgrade's symbol. It has his head as like it, what I'm guessing is like the entryway into the castle. It just screams like for any of you old school players or old school Mario fans. It just screams Bowser's castle from from the uh, Mario Kart games, like Mario Kart 64 and stuff. It just screams that. Like it is. It looks pretty cool. It. <laughs> I'm actually like uh, I wish I can go to this like today. Well, I really wish I could. well, they'll, they'll hopefully. Or I'm pretty sure they're planning to build one of these in Universal Studios Florida, if I'm correct. If only. Um. I, also, I just think it's funny, kind of like what you said. Like in the back shot of that Bowser's Castle is like just highways. Like it's it's just kind of funny, like the contrast. Um, I, mean, I, I mean, I get it. Japan's a pretty condensed area. So yeah, I get it. They're, they're just working with the amount of space that they have. So I get it. Um, so, like I mentioned, these next couple of screenshots are kind of from... I, I think this is a Waterworld live-action show or some shit. You remember Waterworld? It's like a 2000s. Like, oh, the world, like, the ice caps melted, and now... Yeah, the most expensive movie ever made. Something like that. that. That made, like, no money at all. I, I know nothing about Waterworld other than I've heard about it, and I think this is a Waterworld show. I, I don't even understand why this attraction is still in Japan. Like, how is this fucking relevant? But anyways... <laughs> You can see the beautiful Mario planes in the background just rolling. It, it's really nice. It looks great. Reminds me a lot of uh, Super Mario 3D World, if you ever played that one on the Wii U. Kind of got that aesthetic going on. You can kind of see like a little bit of the back of Bowser's Castle. Um, again, though, it, it, it's just funny to me seeing like the transitions of these different things, like the worlds colliding. So you have like this very bleak, metal, rusty gray brown water world type looking thing and then it's like oh right behind it there's like happy mario like it it's almost like disney looking back there i mean yeah i there. love i love i love the uh like the little it's funny that just that contrast of like yeah the grungy like yeah it is cool world. yeah and then the back they're like oh look there's the mushroom kingdom like it's just uh cool and then like the last couple of screenshots i think are also from like some part of the harry potter themed area but you can just see a little bit of the border mm-hmm. there's like a couple of the uh what were they called the 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 like uh the desert area dry dry plains or something like that um or yeah, donut plains wasn't there like a dessert i, I, I think i think he I well yeah that was super mario i think it's just a dry dry desert or something that's what it's called in like the Mario Kart games, yeah, it's like or, sand uh, dunes and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. World Two, the desert level. That's kind of like what that works. Kind of like in all the other the uh, the new Super Mario Brothers. That's kind of what their usual go to is. World Two is the desert level. Oh, but yeah, there's that. That continues to get worked on. I'm sure at some point we'll just watch a video of someone walking through the park on this podcast and be like, "Oh, that looks cool." One day. <sighs> One day. I can't wait. <laughs> Um, but other than that, it, that that's gonna wrap up the news. So that's uh, that's all I got. Oh, uh, it's over so quickly. Let's begin discussing our weeks. Do you want to go first, Mike? Sure. Um, I guess to start off the uh, what I want. Um, he's, he's, I uh, I'll start off with the new thing. So I have. Did I mention the uh, Did I mention the show Avatar: The Last Airbender at all, or did I mention? The sequel series, uh, the Legend of Korra. I can't remember if I ever mentioned that. You actually mentioned both. Did I? Okay. Well. Uh, anyway, for the last, um, maybe, maybe I maybe I did mention it on. Wait. Yeah, that's right. I think I mentioned it on the last podcast. I, I was going to watch it, but I got held up with the whole house situation. I think it's what happened. But uh, so this week, I actually have been watching Korra at night and. I have been binge watching it because um, a buddy of mine at work actually had the uh, the whole series on DVD, like like the little like collection bonder things, or we had to have have like all these like CDs, and so I have the whole series. I've been watching it, and I have to admit, um, I'm enjoying it for the most part. Again, no spoilers for anybody who has not watched it yet. Uh, Corey, I'm I'm sorry. Please uh, remind me. Did you watch either Avatar: The Last Airbender or Korra? Nope. I am completely yeah. 
Yep, dry on all that stuff. Oh, that's right. Now I I remember being so disappointed in you. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that I happens mean, once a day. <laughs> every day with Megan, right? She was, uh, <laughs> so disappointed, Corey. But yeah, so uh, I would definitely recommend for anybody who's including you, Corey, uh, watch Avatar. It's a really good show. I des- I describe it as an American anime. The best way I can describe it. Uh, it's made by Nickelodeon Studios, so obviously there's a lot of things that they can't have. Including blood, cursing, all that, all that fun stuff, death. But anywho, um, so I've been watching Korra, and so far I'm I'm I'm, I'm actually working on the final season. There's four seasons, and uh, first season I thought started off pretty strong. I mean, there was like some some lulls where I'm like they're really focusing on things that weren't really important to the story, but then when they finally got into like the meat of it with the first villain, it was really cool. I thought the first villain was awesome. Second season was very a giant scope is the best way I can describe the second season. Where like it reminded me a little bit of like Dragon Ball. Z. I know I know you're not a big Dragon Ball Z fan, but like in Dragon Ball Z, it's it's like there really is no end goal. It's just it's just the heroes keep encountering new newer villains that are more and more powerful. So it's like okay, well, then they got to get strong enough to defeat this new threat. And unlike Avatar, which basically had like an end goal. Like, like, you know what the main character, Aang, has to do. He has to, like, you know, as I'm sure you've heard many times with, like, the meme of, like, oh, it all changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Like, and the end goal is he has to stop the Fire Nation. So, like, that's where all three seasons, Aang goes, travels the world, does things, but it's ultimately just this, he has an end goal. And this, Korra just keeps encountering new villain. And season two's villain was just so... Like, over the top. Like, it was kind of cool, but then it was lame at the same time. Because I'm thinking, like, there are times that where Korra just couldn't do anything. And then in the end, she won- In the end, she wins. And I'm like, okay, well, now, if, if you can defeat an enemy like this, I don't care who you go up against. You, you should not be able to, to lose to them. Because you just beat, like, this epic, this epic bad guy. It's kind of like... Like Dragon Ball Z kind of has that, where like like the next villain has to be more powerful, because otherwise it's like well then then there's no story. Like if you're, if you're going up against someone who's not as strong as the previous villain, then why are you having a hard time with it? You know, and uh, that's kind of I think that's kind of like Korra's problem. And it it kind of it can get a little disappointing. Season three was pretty refreshing. It had a, a really good villain with good a good inten- like, like well, an evil intention, but it was it was pretty it was pretty it was it was uh, interesting. And now I'm working on the fourth season, and it's uh, it's. I'm not gonna say that I'm I'm not enjoying the show, but I'll definitely say that I think Avatar: The Last Airbender is just better. Um, I think I, I learned from my friend at work that Korra, like one of the co-creators of Avatar, worked on The Legend of Korra, but he actually worked on it with someone from. Um, it was, I don't I don't believe it's Seth MacFarlane, but one of the guys on the Family Guy show. I don't know who I don't know one of the producers. I guess is 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 who helped make Cora, and I'm sure that's maybe why the show is so different. But uh, but uh, ultimately, I'm, I'm still enjoying it, and I'm you know looking forward to seeing how the show ends. <clears throat> Interesting. Yeah, yeah, but I, I I really would recommend watching. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, and the last, this is what I wanted to talk about last week, and I just totally forgot. We kind of like, we, we touched base on it, but I, I kind of just forgot to mention it in the watch replay section. Is uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, yeah, finally watched the movie, and, right? Yeah, yeah, so I just forgot to talk about it, but uh, and you said you did not see it, not yet, no, uh, okay, again, so no spoilers, but I will say it was pleasantly surprising to watch, like, I actually had a good time watching. It definitely is like, you know, it has some corny jokes. It really like, it's in some points tries to emphasize really corny jokes, but like for the sake of like the children in the audience watching it, yeah, they, like it's because ultimately the movie is made for kids. Like you know, like, there's no no beating around the bush about that. But after they redesigned Sonic's look, I can definitely say that the the, the, the redesign I don't think is anywhere. Perfect, but I mean, it is oh my, god, it is miles compared, miles better compared to the, the original concept, and that's funny because as I was as I was watching the movie, I was thinking like, okay, I know what the old Sonic design looked like. I can only imagine how ridiculous it would be. And, well, I, I guess more horrifying to see him interacting with like the people in the movie because like he he, cause he just looks so ridiculous, like. 
like because the way Sonic looks now, it it works with the movie because he looks it looks just like Sonic and he looks like he's just fun and he looks I don't know. It's uh, regardless, the movie was really fun. I think Jim Carrey did a Doctor Robotnik and the uh, not saying it's a movie I'm going to watch over and over again, but again, you know, I I I I enjoyed it. And the cool thing is that there is a tease in the movie that the movie the there's going to be a, I think they, I think they already announced it, so this is not much of a spoiler. But there are some teases in the movie for a sequel, and I think they I think Paramount did confirm that they are making a sequel to this movie, which is pretty cool. I have heard about that. I yeah. actually was curious enough that I watched the um, yeah the it's teasers. A, it's, yeah, it's a good teaser. I mean, it's like oh, uh, I, I I wasn't in theaters when this movie came out. I I watched it on my computer, but I heard. A lot of Sonic fans are happy to see that tease, and they think it looked good. And they're, you know, they, they have they have uh, not high hopes for the sequel, but I'm sure it's just if if you're a Sonic fan, you're gonna be you'll you'll be looking forward to the sequel as well. So the uh, yeah, it was Danky Kang. He comes out and he steals the show. <laughs> He's like, get out of the way, Sonic! <laughs> it's my time. <laughs> No, even better. It's just that woman from Jeopardy just comes out. Of it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> and she just says "Danky Kang," and the screen goes black. <laughs> Anywho, and, and then that's how the Super Smash Brothers cinematic universe begins. <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing if they were to do something like that? Yes, I would be. I would be, I would be very, very happy. Um, I guess that's a good segue to go into what I've been playing recently because I have been playing Danky Kang sixty four again. Oh, a, did you deal and, with those uh, beavers yet? Oh gosh, I finally did. Um, I I beat the game. I did not one hundred percent it. I don't even know if I could be bothered. I I do enjoy like one hundred percent in games. Like that's actually like one like little tedious thing that I kind of like find enjoyable about games, but. Uh, I'm sure, like, I'll, I'll go back and I'll try to 100% it. But now that I beat the game, I might not go back and, and try to get all the golden bananas. But uh, I have to say, like, just by playing that game again, like, oh, man, it's the game has its flaws, as I mentioned. Be- Beaver Bother is one of them. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but uh, even, like, I, I will say the one thing the final boss is actually, like, so well done that, like, it kind of makes you forget about all like, the, the negatives of that game. Like, it just. Because it, again, it's like as I've mentioned many times, it's just good old rare, and their humor and their creativity and their animation and their style. It's just the final. Uh, as I don't know if any of you Donkey, uh, video game people know this, but Donkey Kong's major main villain is King K. Rool, as I'm sure you've seen in Super Smash Brothers uh, uh, Ultimate. Like he he is like the main villain for Donkey Kong, and. Uh, he is the main villain in this game, and the final the final boss battle is it's so random. But again, I, this is why it's just so amazing. Is you fight King K. Rool in a boxing match, and it's great because it utilizes all five of the Donkey Kong characters, all five of the Kongs. Because like it's one, it's basically like there's like like five rounds of you fighting King K. Rool in a boxing match, and he's like dressed as a boxer, and he, it's a uh, I think he I, like there's like. Like like the like the little like microphone guy is like you know let's get ready to rumble and everything like it's and just all like the Kremlings are in the crowd like cheer it, it, it's actually like really funny and each round you play as one of the Kongs and you utilize all of the upgrades that you got throughout the game to fight King K. Rool and it actually is a really really great final boss like it's I maybe maybe modern gamers today will think it's ridiculous but I mean this is just to me this is just this is just good old. Nintendo 64 games. This is a good Nintendo 64 final boss, and it's just it's very well done. And I uh, I got a kick out of it. It actually had me laughing. At points. I I'm glad to know there's an origin story to how we got that King K. Rule got his forward smash and smash. Yeah, that's that, well. That's this is actually something I I was thinking about. Maybe I will elaborate on this. Is King K. Because I actually am at like a like a a secret like big Donkey Kong fan like King K Rool, all of his attacks are from the video game, so yeah like his fourth smash where he has the boxing glove is 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 from Donkey Kong sixty four. Um, oh gosh, what his oh his cannon his side the, the uh, his uh, side B move the side special move is yeah. from 
Donkey Kong Country 2 when he was a pirate. That's why that's why he puts the pirate hat on. They just had and I love that he, he puts the pirate hat on when he does the his like his blunder bust is what I, I guess what the gun is. Um his uh, his little his little like like helicopter jetpack or whatever, that's from Donkey Kong Country 3. And I'm trying to think what else he has. Oh, and he, he, how he throws the crown. That was from the, the original. So, yeah, everything's from the games. And, I, and again, I, I have to give Sakura a, a lot of credit for capturing King K. Rool perfectly in, in, in Ultimate. Oh, and the, here's a, another great thing. People might think his final smash is, is like, like, where did this final smash come from? That is basically the whole purpose of Donkey Kong 64. Basically, King K. Rool has that giant, like, mechanical... A uh, giant mechanical crocodile shape, or basically a giant King Cable shaped, like you know, um, island or whatever. Yeah. And it does have like a death ray on it. And so basically, the whole point of the game is you have to stop him before he blows up. Like, he blows up Hong Kong Island. So yeah, so a little trivia so for those of you who don't know that his final smash is from Donkey Kong sixty four. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So yeah, that was uh what I've mainly been playing, and I guess I'll throw in there that uh. Uh, this weekend, Corey and I actually did give a shot at Clubhouse Games for this Nintendo Switch that, that just came out, and uh, I was playing that on my own, just playing like a few of the many, many tabletop games on there, like checkers and stuff, and chess. And uh, that was—I mean, I'm sure Corey will when he, when it's his turn, he'll obviously talk about it. But yeah, like it, it's 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 a fun game. I was a little price. I thought forty bucks was a little steep, but I don't know. I think it's I think it's pretty worth it. Like I, I've been getting, I've been getting a lot of fun out of it. So I, you know, like, I think it's, it's it's definitely a great game just to to pick up and play whenever you want to kill some time. Um, well, I was gonna uh, I, guess, a- I was gonna ask you if you want to kind of like just talk about it here. Like I'll kind of chime in, you know. Yeah, sure. I mean, if you want here, I'll just I'll, I'll wrap up this and then we'll go back to the uh, clubhouse. I also just wanted to say that the next game I'm gonna be playing again. Hopefully, I'll be able to talk about this next week is subnautica so that's oh, my cool. uh that's for next week again I, I just have so much going on i just haven't had a chance to what once i'm just procrastinating at this point but uh hopefully i'll get it to it this week and uh but yeah like uh clubhouse games what did you think um so like mike said uh we actually recorded something hopefully will be going up soon on youtube somewhere on youtube um but we we played like a, a bunch of different of the games for about an hour and honestly, the only other times that I got to play this other than that was me and my girlfriend Girlfriend played one round of bowling. And uh, like Mike said, this is a 40 buck game, so it's kind of a, a cheaper price title. But I, I think that's mainly because you, you kind of know what you're getting here. You're getting 51 kind of mini games or very basic, simplistic games. Um, however, though, what me and Mike played, I actually really enjoyed it. And I, I think this would be a this is a great game for a, pretty much like it's it's a party game essentially you know it's a lot of fun for if you just you're like hey like a bunch of your friends you just want to like wrap up the night with something kind of light you know you could all play something on there like bowling or air hockey or something like that even online you get access to a couple more different types of games I, I actually didn't know this Mike but depending if you play. Uh, like two players or more than that at your house, like you get different types of games than online. Like obviously at my house, we can't play uh last card or whatever that Uno like game because you yeah. there's no way for people to not look at other players' hands. Yeah, like yeah, like like the split screen basically that just wouldn't work because like, then you see everyone's hand. Yeah, or even like even like text. Exactly. Have- so, in a way, it does kind of limit some of the games you can and can't play because it essentially like, will cut off, like, oh, you can't, like, you literally can't play that game, like, locally. You have to only play this game online or against computer players. So, I guess there's some players that might hinder this purchase, but overall, I enjoyed what I played. I, I guess we can kind of just talk about, like, each of the different games. You can maybe enlight- enlighten me on games that I'm missing here. Um,. We play. We started with checkers, which I thought was fun. It was. It's just checkers, but um, something that me and Mike didn't necessarily know, or something that's with this version of checkers, is that if you have a move that'll make you jump, it locks you into doing that jump. You can't like 
be like, oh, am I going to move this piece down here, or move some of my pieces out of my base? It's like, no. If your piece can jump one of the enemy pieces, that's all you get locked into. So, I never knew that about checkers. Like, I, like, I was blown away to find it. I, I, and I, 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 I probably should Google it. I'm, I'm sure it might be like an actual rule, but I never knew that, that you yeah. were forced to jump. I, I, I never knew that. I don't know. It could be an official rule, or it's how this game is. But, I mean, it, it honestly made the game way more interesting because we yeah, really had to... It was a very big, like, mental battle. I mean, that's kind of all that checkers really is at the end of the day. But it, it just added, like, more strategy to it where it's like, okay, so you kind of have to plan the action after the jump, you, you know. So it, I honestly had a lot of fun with just checkers. Um, do you have anything else you want to chime in on that or should I just keep moving? Um, no, yeah, I, I, I think you said it best. Like, yeah, we, we just we just felt that uh, uh, checkers was a good game that everyone plays. Like, I think most people know checkers and we thought, eh, we'll just start off with that. And then uh, I don't remember the games in order, but I know one of the games that we played and I had a horrible time with it was the shooting gallery or the uh, the target, the shooting target game. <laughs> I think it was just called shooting range or something shooting like that. Range or shoot yeah. out. So if any of you have ever played uh, like we sports um or excuse me we play there was like a shooting range in there where you kind of just point your uh, Wii mode at the screen and you press a button to shoot it um it's kind of like that it's very simplistic you know you move a cursor around and hit various targets you know avoid hitting certain targets that make you lose points try to hit like special targets that give you more points it was it's kind of like a watered down version of that we play experience but like like mike said yeah it's it's more uh, attuned to using a Joy-Con like a Wiimote as he was using you were using a pro controller right yeah I was, I was using my pro controller so I used my analog sticks to move and I'll be I, I didn't stand a chance chance to Corey because he, he's obviously you using the Joy-Con so the gyro aiming was so much more it was so much faster and accurate than me trying to like score around it, it was just I just didn't stand a chance <laughs> it was I was laughing because I was just like I, it, it was almost like not fair but I, yeah. I, I didn't care I didn't care. I thought it was funny. <laughs> but it was just so funny because like, if I wanted to, because the thing is, like, my cursor would only move as fast as the controller would let me. Like, if, so you, if you want to swing across, a swing across the screen, you can with your gyro aiming. So <laughs> it was kind of funny. Yeah. Um. Why? Not, since we both played this, why don't you uh like talk about some of the other games we played? I'm trying to think. We had uh, checkers, the shooting thing. We did. Um. I'm, I'm trying to think. Oh, we did. We did the Uno game. That was. Or yeah, last card. Last card, but it's yeah. essentially Uno. Yeah, and that was fun. That was actually, that was actually like surprisingly more fun than I thought it would be. It, I I can't remember the last time I actually played Uno, but playing that like it was it was actually like pretty fun. And something I want to point out that again, I don't know if this is an official rule on Uno, but you can essentially stack. I I believe all the different types of card, the effect cards. So like. If I give Mike a plus a draw two card, if he has another one, he can stack on that and essentially give it to the next player, which I thought is kind of fun. Yeah, it was like a weird combo where like, like, like it, the game was very fast paced because it was all automated. So like, if like if like a, if like a computer player played like these draw cards, like before I know it, like the next player was drawing like six cards or something. I was kind of like, wait, like, like what is happening? Why, or why, or why is this, why is the computer player or why did I just draw six cards? I thought like a draw two was played, but so it was, it was kind of strange seeing like, seeing, the, cause I, I don't play, I only play, I kind of get the gist of it to like not have any cards left, but like, it was just kind of funny seeing like, there was just, just some rules that I never knew. <laughs> also, I just want to say, don't forget to press the button to call out you have the last card because you don't want to get that penalty. Yeah, I did not know that was a rule either, but luckily I followed the prompt. So I... <laughs> We also uh, played uh, Chinese checkers. Yes, yes, we did. And, uh, yeah, well, I was, yeah and that, that, was, that was fun too. Again, I, I haven't played some of these games in forever. Like, yeah. Since, like, easily, yeah. like... I can't. I couldn't tell you. I, I think I mentioned that in the video. I'm like, I don't remember the last time I played checkers, but I had fun playing checkers again. Yeah, and uh, we didn't play chess because we figured that would just take too long. I think we, I think we tried to like keep our play time to like an hour maximum. Um, we did play the tank game. That was uh, that was kind of fun. I think that was just called battle tank or something like that. Yeah, 
is like a one on one. I don't know if they could, you could have more players in that version, but yeah, it was like you would control your tank, and there was a tank game like this kind of on Wii Sport or Wii Play, but this one was more a little bit different. It actually had like tank control, so the one stick literally turns you left or right, but it actually, or you go forward or backward with it, like tank controls in like a video game. Uh, so that was a little weird to get used to. But yeah, it, it, it kind of has like a lot of depth. Like you can shoot like one round at a time. Your round can like bounce off a wall once. So you can kind of have like strategy with that. You also have a alternate fire, which is like a lob shot where you aim your uh, barrel of your tank up and it shoots like a big shot down. And it's kind of like a little explosion. So it's technically like a bigger area of effect, but it's slower. Um, and then there's like different types of uh, objects in the field. There's like walls you can destroy. There's like these spikes that the tanks can't drive over, but they can shoot through. It it it, it seemed pretty fun. Yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed it. It was just like I think I think the, the tank controls were the hard part of that game. Like it was kind of like awkward, but I mean that's that's just that's just how it is. It's tank controls. It was fun. Um, what... was the only other thing we played the bowling. Or did we play anything else besides those games? I don't think well, so. I, I I actually forgot all about the bowling. Yeah, we played the bowling, and that was pretty fun. I I, I will. I think Corey That's and I can both we agree. It on. Yeah, I, but I think Corey and I can definitely agree. We bowling. This is not. We bowling is actually surprisingly. We bowling's better. Yeah, I was. Uh, but it is much much. I mean, this is, still, this is still fun. But like, I mean, we bowling. Oof, I don't know. I I remember, I remember that game so much just smoother. Yeah, but anyway, it was so fun. Um, I, I want to say that's probably all we did. We we didn't play that many games because no. again we were kind of, I think we were we were limited on some of the games you can play. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, and we we literally like barely scratched the surface of this. I'm sure we'll put more time into it over yeah, the absolutely. few weeks. Um, but yeah, for the for the bowling, real quick, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, how you control the bowling is it's all like I I think you can only use a Joy-Con because you had to get a Joy-Con to play it right. Uh, yeah, you had to because it, it had to utilize. So yeah, I, I I had to put down the had to put down my pro controller and get my jar and get my uh my Joy Cons to play. So, but yeah, so I, I believe you essentially just use one Joy Con and you can move it like your ball left to right with your thumbstick, and then with the two buttons on your one Joy Con left to right will kind of adjust the angle, and uh, really the only uh. Uh, settings is you can play with bumpers on or off and then you can pick how many uh, rounds you want to do which is I think it's 5, 10 I don't know what the max was we didn't really look um, but yeah it's it's a it's a very basic bowling we play or excuse me now I said the wrong one that time we sports <laughs> uh, bowling experience but what watered down um, I, I mentioned this to Mike and in the video but I, I feel like it's a little lifeless there's not like a lot going on outside of the ball like you don't even see your hand it's literally just a bowling ball yeah, yeah. floating um, yeah, I think we said like, I think we said like if, like if like way sports had like just the the, the me's like and just even like in the other lanes like the other like, like the other like little like CPUs that would just bowl it kind of makes you feel like you're actually in a bowling alley this was just like the, like there's lanes, but no one's using them. It's just you, and it's just your ball and your pin. So, yeah, I, I think Corey said it best. Like it was more, it was it was, it was kind of, it was kind of like soulless, you know. Yeah. The Wii Sport, the Wii Sports kind of felt more fun because like, oh look, we're like all of our me's are bowling together, you know. It's the little things. Now, when me and Mike played our first couple rounds of this, we really could not get the hang of actually throwing the ball. So how you do it is you kind of throw it how you would throw a bowling a bowling ball like you kind of arc your uh, dominant arm back and then kind of throw it forward but how you have to do it on the controller is you hold your the bumper whatever it is so if you have the right trigger joint, button yeah, yeah the, the trigger, trigger the trigger that's a better word so you'll hold the trigger button and then you'll you know throw it back and then you may you need to make sure you're always holding that throw button and that then, was my issue because yeah. I was used to I was used to Wii bowling where if you like I think it was the B button on the underside of the Wii remote, like you hold it to when you when you arch your arm and then when you let go of the ball, you let go of the trigger. So I kept doing that and I'm like, wow, my ball's not going anywhere. I, I, like, so yeah, you just gotta hold it in the entire time. It'll it'll let go when you 
throw your throw the ball. So it just it it was off. needless to say it was a little awkward at first, but we did eventually get the hang of it, and we were starting to have fun, and thought it actually felt pretty good. Well, I thought it felt pretty good. I I don't know. Did did you enjoy it? Like around the I end did. of the game. I would say about that when we finally figured out the control. Like I, I kind of wish maybe we maybe played it again, but I, I knew we didn't have a lot of time with, to, yeah. to work on. It, so. That honestly, that was one of the games that I really enjoyed. Like I definitely love to play that again. I'd love to play the uh, shooting one where you actually have a Joy-Con, you know, so we could actually compete and it's not just a <laughs> slaughter fest. Um, but yeah, like I said, what, what we played, I, I had a lot of fun. The only other time I played this is I, I just wanted to show it to my girlfriend. So we did like one round. Um, I, I guess it's important to mention, like when I played with Mike, I was playing on my streaming setup. There's kind of like my desk in my upstairs room. And then when I played with my girlfriend, we played in my living room on my, my big TV. And, uh, I, I will say I felt like the motion controls were slightly better there. I mean, it's more akin to it. You know, I have more room to like get up and actually throw the ball and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, on that, that second round, I, I just, I, I really, it was another slaughter fest, man. I just gave it to her and I felt so bad. I'm like, I, I just wanted to show it to her. I didn't mean to just like destroy her, but yeah, I was getting the hang of it. Like on my second round to the point where I actually got a turkey. That's three in a row. If you don't know, it's three strikes in a row. You don't oh, know bowling yeah. lingo. And you were taking the easy on me then. Jeez. I, I just had to get the, the swing of things. I, I I'm not I'm okay at regular bowling. I, I was pretty good at Wii bowling. Um but yeah, I, I had a good time with it and I'm I'm curious to try a lot of the other different games there. I, I know the, the golf isn't like a typical golf game, but I think that yeah. could be fun. It, it's more like a a, a, a arcade type yeah. top down thing. But yeah. it, it looks interesting. I, I, I definitely. Did, I, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I, I'm sorry. I didn't cut you off. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was gonna say if you want, I can kind of like, like describe it. And uh, yeah, it's it's like a top top down view, like arcade like game in golf, or like like in Wii golf again. This is why we, I think the the Wii like Wii Sports is really underrated. Now that I think about it, like because in Wii golf you actually use the Wii remote as your as your golf club. You like. It's all, it's all about how much you raise it, how much, how fast you swing it. This is all just button input. So like, like it's kind of like I'm reminded of the old Madden games. Like if you were like the, if you were like the doing like a, I'm not sure if you if you ever played any of the old sports games. I haven't played them in years. But like in like in the old Madden football games, like if you were the kicker and you're about to do a kickoff or something or go for the extra point, there's like a little like oscillating meter that kind of indicates how how hard you're going to kick the ball that's kind of what they have here for for like your putter or for your driver and you just like you choose what you want to use your putter your your iron and your driver and it's like that part's just like we golf but then it's all it's all top down view so like you know exactly you know exactly where what the what the whole course is above you so you don't really get like a big sense of scope, like you don't. It, it it doesn't make you feel like you're on like a giant golf course, and uh, I mean, it's still fun. Like I think I think the maximum you can do is like nine holes. I mean, I enjoyed it, but I once again I think it's it's cool that it's in it's cool that it's included, but it's just not as good as Wii Golf in my opinion. Something that I thought was cool about the golf game that isn't here though, and about the Wii Sports Golf, is that they're all based on the original. Um, golf game that came out on the nes like mm -hmm. all the holes are based off the same like like the layout of them like where the sand pits are where the the green I, is i did not know that okay. i i actually learned that from a game game explain video but i thought that was pretty cool um oh, that was pretty cool. but yeah i want to i want to check out that i want to check out air hockey i feel like air hockey could have high potential because i i love me a good air hockey uh, there's darts yeah. in there. There, there's a lot of games, you know. Even yeah. like the the basic card game stuff and chess. Like I, I mentioned in the video, I love chess. So if this is a good like chess simulator, like that'd be great. I think it's a good chess simulator. I, I was playing against a computer, and uh, I might again. It's it's good even just to play by yourself against the computer to like you know to get better at it and uh, test yourself, practice. I thought you were um, gonna say you're gonna cry yourself to sleep because the computer beat you. <laughs> Well, that too, because I, I was, I, I, this is the thing is, I, I, I'm going to, I'll admit it, I'm not a good chess player, but I want to be a good chess player, so I'm going to keep practicing. Fair enough. I, I'm also not a great chess player, but I like chess. 
Uh, is that all we really got on Clubhouse Games? Should I just continue um, with the rest of my week? Um, yeah, because I, I, I think I, I think we summed it all up, and yeah, there's, I, I definitely want to try it again with you. And, you know, try more of that because there's still so many of the games I haven't. Many of them I just I have no idea how to play. Right, like, and it'd be better like us playing them together. I, this, I, I mainly look at this as like a party game. Like I doubt I'm gonna spend a lot of time playing this alone. Maybe yeah. it'd be a pretty good like as a mobile thing like if you're like oh i kind of want to play some chess like it'd be a good like you know if you have a car ride or you have like a commute or something and you want to you know play a couple rounds or something but mainly i bought this because i thought oh you know maybe the bowling's good it could be like we bowling or maybe the t- darts are fun and we could play dart you know that's a lot of games in there it's 51 games it's good bang for your buck mm-hmm. yeah i think it, and yeah to kind of comment on what you're saying earlier like yeah i think the game is perfect to play by yourself but i think it is best enjoyed like with friends or playing online like with other people i i also really enjoy the uh art style of this game it's like a very like simplistic clean look at look i really i, I dug it no yeah, me too like i think i think i kind of commented and i felt bad but like i it's nothing about these graphics are like my very simplistic you can tell it's not like, you know, the graphics themselves aren't anything to write home about, but it's very nice. It's very appealing to the eye. You know, it's it's, yeah. it's not bad. Yeah. I think it's because, as you said, that simplistic look, it's very colorful, very bright and shiny. But like, like you might see a couple sharp edges and be like, really? Like, they couldn't make this the head of this pawn more of a circle or a sphere. But it's like, like they made whatever. 51 games. Cut them some slack. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's <laughs> kind of and that's kind of like what it comes down to. Like, you're not buying the game the smooth edges of the chess pieces. You're just here to play the oh. games. Oh, that also reminded me of another funny feature that I want to try. I think on some of the board games, you can play, like, handheld and actually, like, just touch your screen, you know, like, and move your pieces, like, on checkers or something like that. Oh, okay. And, and I think wow. you can actually pick up your Switch and kind of, like, shake it up and make all the pieces go everywhere. <laughs> Like, if you're, like, mad, you're like, oh, I'm doing bad. <laughs> Screw this. But then I think there's, like, a feature that puts them all back. Oh, okay. I was saying, that's perfect for someone like me, because I'm definitely going to be rage quit. <laughs> Just like, ah! Just throw them. And I'll, I'll, maybe I'll, I'll, I, I kind of want to test that out. See, like, if all the chess pieces just fall all over the I, place. I'm pretty sure they do. And then you, you, maybe, maybe you press the X button. And they'll just, they'll yeah. Just go, It'll whoop, just be right like, all right. People. You, you've that's had your cool. temper tantrum. Now are you ready to play the game like a man? Let it all out, Mike. <laughs> Thank you, Game Explain. I also think that was on there. Anyways, though, uh, let's let's talk a little bit more about my week. What else did I do? Yeah, uh, well, I, I think I brought up... D- did I mention last week that I watched The Matrix? I think I did, you, right? You did, yes. Yeah, so naturally I'm like, yeah, I might as well go through all The Matrix movies, watch the other two, just to... Uh, refresh in my mind. I've seen them all before. Um, so, be- believe it or not, I actually tried twice to watch The Matrix Reloaded. And this this is not a, a dig against the quality or maybe the content of The Matrix Reloaded. Personally, I feel like The Matrix is the peak and the sequels digress in quality. But twice when I tried to watch The Matrix Reloaded, I fell asleep both times. I was not able to get through all of it. Once I fell asleep like 30 minutes in, the second time I fell asleep an hour in. Will I be able to complete the Matrix Reloaded again? I don't know. It's not looking good right now. Corey, (laughs) I'm going to chime in and just say don't worry. Because I also agree that the Matrix 2 or the Matrix Reloaded is not that fun to watch. I don't know why, but (laughs) I enjoyed the first one. The second one was like... Um, I can't even remember like like what what's important about it to the story. I um, honestly don't even I honestly don't remember how 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 critical it was to the storyline. It, like, it's a lot about uh oh god is it called I I just watched these movies and I can't remember the names. That's how bad my memory is. It's like about the last human city. Is it called like Zion or Zion? Like the <laughs> one that's actually on Earth, not in the Matrix. And there's yeah. a lot of weird stuff like going on in there, like. It's very odd because this whole world is very, like, you know, technology focused, but a lot of the stuff going on in Zion is almost like very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's very, like, set in the past. Like, it's almost like 
these people yeah, yeah it's almost like these people just want to reject technology so much that their way of living almost looks like something out of like the roman times or like the medieval times if you will like they're very simplistic even like the style of their outfits and there was like this one scene where there's like this big like cult well they're not really a cult but they're like partying essentially and it almost looks like a tribal like dance scene and neo is like having sex with trixie and there's, there's a bunch going on i i don't know though it, again i don't want to i know they're not the best movies but i i just was I shocked think, i couldn't get through i i just i don't know <laughs> no i mean I'll, i kind of want to just chime in and say like don't worry the thing is like i enjoyed the major because it's you know it's fun to watch. It's, it's trippy but it's fun to watch the only thing i can remember from the sequel is that you learn that like agent smith you know uh Hugo Weaving, like he can obviously make copies of himself. That's like the only thing I took from that. Part oh yeah, movie. yeah. And then the third movie is like the culmination of the climax. Everything. Yeah, and it actually is kind of fun. It actually does have like the final like showdown between the man, man versus machine, and how like it's and how Smith is like going to take over everything. So like it's, it basically it, it is the culmination of every, of everything that this whole series is about. And I do remember the third one being. At least being better than the sequel, I, th- I think the first one's the first movie still the best. But I do, I think it's called the Matrix Revolutions is the final yeah. one. Yep. And yeah, I do believe that is. I remember that being like a like a decent movie. So when you do get, to, I'm sorry, did you watch that movie yet? Or, 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 I, I've I seen getting... Revolutions before. I haven't got oh, to okay. it yet. But okay. Okay. To rewatch it, I, I was gonna make a joke and say much like uh, THQ Nordics remastering name lines, we got the Matrix Reloaded. Yeah. The Matrix re or revolutions, even the Matrix reanimated, which is like that animated spinoff movie, thing. I've never yeah, seen I, that, but I, I heard that's I good. Think was, I'm thinking of the video game. There was one called, I think it was called Enter the Matrix. That was a really popular like right. PS2 that game. That sounds right. Yeah. Oh man, that that Morpheus though, he's always up to something. He, he what really if I told you. He really trusts Neo. <laughs> but that's the one thing I remember because I watched it twice, and now I'll probably watch it a third time. He's like going to the council of the people who escaped the Matrix, and they're all like, "Morpheus, you idiot! Like, do you really think Neo is gonna save us all? Like, everyone's just like saying how stupid he is for believing that Neo's the one, and he'll do all this. (laughs) It's kind of just funny. He's like, you know, just like, shut up, guys, watch him. Yeah. Well, that's like that's like one of like the like my least favorite like, uh, like movie concepts like or the name of a concept like you have like super saiyan and you have like all these other crazy things like oh the king of the north from like game of thrones and now it's like but what is like what is this whole thing with the matrix it's the, he's the one like the one what the one <laughs> it's and it kinda, it, it's kind of like confusing because like it's so easy to get, like miss misunderstand get it, what get it guys neo is an anagram for one whoa i actually didn't know that <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was today today years old when I was <laughs> <I'm such> an idiot. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, maybe one day I'll finish The Matrix Reloaded. Who knows? I, I mean, I technically finished it twice in my sleep. You know what I'm saying? Um. All right, let, let's move on. Besides uh, The Matrix, I also finally completed My Hero Academia Season 4. I literally had, like... 15 to 12 episodes to finish guys and it took me what a month two months that's crazy my watching habits i just want to let everyone know are horrible i i generally won't watch any anime around my girlfriend because she doesn't really care for it so whenever i'm with her we'll end up watching sometimes i'll throw on a youtube or twitch video or like i'll just watch like a, a sitcom or a movie with her that you know we both can kind of agree on but I'm just kind of saying that's why it takes me a while to get through anime because that's kind of like my time if I, you know, just have, I, I guess, me time, essentially. Um, but yeah. <laughs> anyways, I, I I really liked how uh, My Hero Academia Season 4 ended. It was really cool. And it had a, a nice little like cliffhanger for what's to come whenever they make Ooh. more anime over there in Japan land. Ooh, exciting. Um, but because I ended that anime, of course, I need to start a new one. And uh, the list is ever growing, but I decided to watch this show that just came to Netflix. I I want to say in March, uh, Netflix actually uh, picked up this anime, and uh, 
I, I, I don't know if they just like help them produce it or help them uh, bring it over here to like the West and other countries. I, I don't know how those deals work, but uh, this anime is called Beastars. stars that's spelled beast. And then you put like a R S at the end. So it's like beast and stars. It's kind of like a double entendre type thing, but oh, I get it. yeah, the, the plot of this show from what I'm getting at is it's kind of a Zootopia type thing. So there are these human animals Some might say they're almost furry bait, if you will. But, uh, (laughs) yeah, they're all in high school because it's an anime. Everyone's always in high school. And um, there's, of course, the herbivores. And then there's the carnivores. And they do coexist. But, of course, one of these carnivores had that, that curdling cry for blood and meat. And he ended up killing and eating one of the herbivore classmates. And this this does sound just like Zootopia now that you mention it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm getting it's kind of like an anime Zootopia, if you will. And literally, like the first episode goes a lot into like, oh, he's a carnivore. Why would you want to like associate yourself with him? Like they're just like they're gonna try to eat you or something. And it's like what? But I unfortunately I only watched the first episode, so I didn't really get too into this. But they're essentially just establishing characters. And uh, you, there's this main character, I, I forget his name because I'm horrible with names, but he's like a wolf and he's kind of like, he kind of keeps to himself, he's quiet and like all these girls are like scared of him, like, because this is after, like, you know, they put out the public news, like, oh, one of the classmates was eaten, so they kind of assume it's him, but I mean, this is spoiling the episode, but it's fine, but uh, he ends up going up to this one girl who she thinks he's like stalking him and is going to eat him of course it's something different happens he gives her like a love letter of the person who got eaten who wanted to like i guess go on a date with her or something like that so it's like oh he's actually a sweetheart uh but it, it, yeah it seems cool I, i'm curious to see where this goes uh it, right, cool. it, it had a pretty interesting twist at the end where it appeared that our main character this wolf man was about to potentially eat a little bunny schoolgirl. so yeah also, if you know, that's your kink. I mean, there it is. They're literally all furries. They are in high school, though, so I don't know. You might want to, might want to open that incog browser. You know, I. Who's the? That's judge? not gonna. That's not gonna stop anybody. Who's the judge? Me. Go on the dark web. I don't know. <laughs> don't worry. The FBI will find you. <laughs> they know where you. They know what you look up. Um, but yeah, that's that's really all I watched. Um, as for gaming. I uh, I got some my my normal checklist here. I got uh, Smash Ultimate. Played some more rounds of that. That's fun. Animal Crossing. I, I'm kind of falling off a little bit of that, honestly. Like I've I've been kind of into it, but now I'm kind of like a little over it now. There there's still like some animals I didn't get to, or I should say fish and bugs I didn't get to cat capture. But I I, I don't know. Like I'm kind of like I, I might just take a little break from it and come back to it later. I don't know. I'm not really feeling it right now. Um. I played a little bit more Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu with my uh, friend. Oh, I forgot to... I'll plug him here now. It, it, there, He said he should be uploading the video soon. It's over at Loudstone Entertainment. It'll, it'll be in the uh, description if you guys want to go find it. But, uh, I was going to say, like, uh, like I, I actually went to go take a look at his channel, to take a look at the channel to see if he did upload ever, anything yet, and I was very sad to see that there was no Let's Go Pikachu Let's Play yet. Spoiler alert, um... I've been having multiple issues trying to send him the file of the video so he can edit it. And uh, that was a whole bunch of hoops I had to jump through. But luckily enough, I was able to send them to him. So I believe that should be starting soon. And we do have three parts recorded and we're going to record more over the coming weeks. So look forward to that. Um, But anyways, to give you a little taste of what's to come in the episode or episodes in the future, uh, we actually beat... Brock, the first gym leader, uh, that was fun going through there. I, again, I, I this we we talked about this last week how this is kind of like a very introductory uh, Pokemon game. So it it seemed like a cakewalk. I I literally just took in our Oddish named Booberry, and I was absorbing all those rock types. Literally, HP just wiped away. Um, Wait a minute, they, this game I didn't play this game. So I don't know all the Pokemon like locations, but I, I don't remember there being any Oddishes. Brock, that's a little uh, 
That sounds a little cheesy. Wait, what do you mean? <laughs> um, so you're saying you have an Oddish, and you use that to defeat... Pro- oh, yeah, dude. Um, so, oh, my gosh. It, yeah. In this- you, Alex, I was going to say, like, don't tell me this game makes you have to go get a Mankey to beat him. Because like, if, you, if, you, if you have Pikachu, you're not being Brock. No, at least not- no. Yeah, they they give you way more different Pokemon you can catch at the beginning. Oh, so okay. So yeah, of course you go through the the bushes and you see like at the beginning, like right out of Pallet Town, there's like just Pidgeys and Ratatats. It's like yeah, that's that's yeah, what you usually beautiful. see. Yeah. Then you uh, get to this little. I think it's like right after the first town you get into, the one where has uh yeah. that's like giovanni's gym i forget what that town's called it's viridian city Corey. They, oh yeah i'm on the road to Vir- yeah we talked about that uh yeah, my so bad right yeah um <laughs> but, but yeah to the left of that there's like a little bit of grass and over there there were oddishes there was nidoran both female and male so i just caught up all the good pokes right there and i'm like dude we're gonna have nido king and nido queen like by the end of this oh, game that's gonna be sick um but yeah i just been rocking out that oddish i'm like well this is gonna be a cakewalk through yeah the- <laughs> i was gonna say like because i was thinking like they have to give you something cause otherwise it's, it's gonna be very difficult and, and there but... were mankeys well actually we found the that, mankeys no... after the the pewter city gym but really? yeah because that was the old thing in in the uh well in the, in the original blue and red if you chose charmander good luck you're just gonna have a you're gonna have a tough you want that charizard but you're gonna have a tough time beating brock and then in the yellow version it was the pikachu so you you had a, a less of a chance to beat him so they had to give you some way and they gave you a mankey like you can catch a mankey and mankey could beat the rock types but i was thinking that makes like sense yeah it's well i guess i'm so i'm still not quite sure why fighting beats rock but whatever <laughs> the point is the point is i was, I was curious like are they going to give you the Mankey option, or is there something else? And I, I didn't expect them to give you a, a grass type because that just makes it way too easy. I think. <laughs> like, well, but... I, I do know that in this game, much like uh, Pokemon Yellow, you can get all the original starters too. I just haven't found them yet. But trust me, when I find any of them, they're just going to be in my party. You know. I was gonna. Say, I, I I will give you a bit of a tease. I haven't played this game, but if, if this is more remake of the Yellow version, then. I think I know where all of the Pokemon, oh, all the starters. are. That's right. sick. I'm glad to hear that. Okay, that's yeah. really cool. All yeah. right. So, because if you play Yellow, then maybe you know where starters are hiding. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Um, I, I do have more to comment about the gym. I mean, like I said, I kicked Brock's ass. It was Oddish just sneezed on all of them, and I, I got the the Rock badge. Also, I I do love how uh, I I don't know if you know this, but. Like Rock, you know how Brock has his stance that's like his crossed arms. Yeah, yeah, that's like a traditional thing. Like that's how he looked in, in his original sprite. And, yeah, Did well, they keep that in this. Yeah, of course. Awesome. And they have this nice design of him, which is kind of like a, a nice modern Brock, where you get a little bit of that orange on his coat, but it's mostly mm-hmm. black with a little bit of green. Like this Brock, Chef's kiss perfectly designed i can't wait to see misty i can't wait to see all the other gym leaders because i love the original cast of gym leaders it, it, they, the, the people think that oh it's going to be like brock and misty from the anime pretty sure these are going to be like brock and misty from the manga so that's it, why it's kind of an in between i would say they're okay. also older oh i forgot to mention that this i i was always curious about if this game is a direct sequel to like red or blue or yellow yeah and yeah, it def- you mentioned like Gary, Gary or Blue is not your rival, and you're so you're not red. Like who? So that, yeah. that's kind of what your question was. Yeah, but I'm about to blow all y'all's mind and say yes, it is a sequel because I met Gary and he's totally older. Also, his name wasn't Gary; it was Blue. He's like, I'm Blue, and it was just Gary. And I'm like, yo, this is awesome. Which means, if I would think correctly, that the last trainer I fight at the Elite Four will be Red, which is going to be awesome. I hope yeah. that's the case. I, 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 yeah, I, I mean, obviously we're just speculating, but if you met Blue, then most likely Red. Well, it makes sense because technically, in 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 the original Pokemon, you were Red and you beat Blue. Yeah. Or, so I bet you're right. I bet I bet you're right. I bet oh, he's I bet he, he's a champion. I, I can't bet he, wait. I bet, I bet it's his own Pikachu. Oh too. yes. So that's cool. Um. Oh, but also I was gonna say about the game, like. You know, I, I don't really have much else to say about the gameplay or anything like that, but they actually have these new trainers, which are called, like, I already forget their name, but they're kind of like an optional boss, if you will. Like, they're like, they they 
quote themselves as saying they are tougher trainers than like the normal ones that you know just will exclamation point and walk miles away to challenge you to a battle they're they'll just stand there and you can walk up to them and be like oh do you want to try to fight against my pokemon or whatever and uh i i just loved the first one where they tutorialized and explained it and he just throws out one bulbasaur i'm like that's it you have one oh, pokemon I think, I think i heard i think i heard about this and i think there's one for every pokemon and so that way you will face like a trainer oh that, that makes sense that. okay yeah i think i heard that they're like the master of, like so you face the bulbasaur master or something like something like that i think i remember i think i remember someone told me about that it actually it Arlo's videos where he played that game. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. But yeah, I, I fought a couple of those, and I mean, they were pretty easy from what I fought. But again, I literally just the first time I ever fought them, so it, it makes sense that they're easy. Also, the I believe the area we ended off was in the uh, is it is it Mount Moon where all the Clefairy are, like that cave yeah. with all the zoo bats and stuff yeah, like that. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So we were just in there walking around. Of course, there were a lot of zoo bats. Um, I, we actually got a Geo dude in there, which I'm gonna rock with because I <laughs> get it. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, dude, dude's cool. Um, oh, yeah, I, I hope I look forward to playing Geo. that game. I actually, that's one of my favorite games I'm playing right now. It's a very light game, and you know, it's it's very simplistic and easy, so you can kind of shut your brain off. But it's a lot of like good nostalgia, like oh, look over there, it's uh, Paris. Let's catch Paris, you know. Yeah, I think the highlight are going to be the gym battles because they're they're going to be really fun. Oh yeah, to get into, you know, even like going on the hunt for like Moltres, Ardos, Ar- Ardos, Articuno, and Zapdos, like that'll be fun. Yeah, uh, but that's all like pretty late game stuff. We're still very early. Um, we don't even have cut yet. We we're literally looking at the bush tree things <laughs> that were like we could clearly walk around this, guys. Come yeah. on. I, I guess, like, when you see it, like, in this game, it kind of makes it more, like, ridiculous effect. Yeah. Like, really, I can't it, walk it's around hilarious. this truck. Yeah. yeah. I also think, uh, I, I believe I remember hearing about this from this game, but I think your Pokemon partner, so Pikachu or Eevee, actually learns all those TM moves. So you actually mm-hmm. don't have to, like, be like, oh, I have the Pokemon that gets fly and dig and cut, you know? Yeah. The, the, H, the HM slaves. Are the, they, uh, there like, you go. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's really all I got to say about that game, though. I'm still enjoying it. Slowly picking away at it. Um, and then we talked about uh, Clubhouse Games 51 or whatever. I like that. It's fun. Uh, last but not least, I started getting back into Call of Duty Warzone again. And uh, I've been enjoying playing that. I actually played... A little bit the other day with uh, a couple of my friends, and that that's been fun diving back into that. I don't really have much else to say about that other than I, you know, back in and having fun with it. Uh, with that being said, though, I think we are at the end of our podcast. And moment of truth here, I didn't get to check the email, so let me see if we got any questions this week live on air. Let me see. I saw you sent out the link. Maybe someone. Unfortunately, yeah. not. Nope. Yeah, it's empty. bad fans. I did send. I try. I maybe I have to. I I need to start our, doing it too. Yeah, I think we need to entice our fans. Maybe we'll do like the first person to ask a question will get uh, a Jolly Rancher. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that just mail them one Jolly Rancher. Mail them. Yeah. What's the worst Jolly Rancher flavor? The grape flavor. I don't know. Oh, I like or grape. The, uh, the lemon flavor. I don't know. They don't have. <sighs> If you want to send us an email at levelwithmepodcast at gmail.com about whatever you want, uh, you could tell Mike how there's no lemon Jolly Rancher flavor. Hey, shut up. <laughs> there's like five colors. Come on. There's a yeah, pink and a red. Yeah. It's very confusing. But well, other I'm than that. Sure, I'm pretty sure I've seen a yellow Jolly Rancher. That had to be a but, special one. Well, that's besides the point. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> but yeah, any question. What's your favorite candy? You know, Hershey. Yeah. What's Jolly Rancher Jolly is made <laughs> by Hershey. Hershey's right here in Pennsylvania, where we both live. Look at that. Uh, but yes, level with me podcast at gmail.com. Um, also, uh, you know, we're both uh, the YouTube men. You can check out our channels. That's Game Bro Corey and The Collector's Vault, all one word. Um, you can also check out my Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash Game Bro Corey. Maybe I'll go live on there. I've been a little little absent. I've been busy with some other stuff recently, but I want to get back. I, I 
I, I know, like, I made a joke a few weeks ago how, like, I was just playing the same stuff, but now I, like, miss playing that stuff, you know? Like, I haven't played Fallout 76 in a few weeks now. I want to get back into Neo 2. Um, so, there yeah. There you go. I, I mean, I'm, I'll probably stream, like, Warzone. That's an easy thing to stream. Like, you know, get, just get on there. Um, oh, my God, that just reminded me of something that I completely forgot to talk about. I oh. I had to clean my PC on Sunday, I was having some issues where it was crashing when I was playing games. And, uh, yeah, it was a, quite a mess getting in there. A lot of black dust. You never want to see black dust. Yeah. Um, but it's very satisfying when you finally do clean oh, it out. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and it, it does make a difference. Oh, yeah. It, I believe it helped. Um, could I have cleaned it better in there? Definitely. I probably only got, like, about 70%. But I, I think what I got helped. The next time I'll clean it, I will figure out a way to actually get to the rest of the bits mostly it's always just dust getting in like fan fans or vents that really mess with pcs you know just make sure to actually clean them out you know if you have a gaming pc i i'm the one doing stuff wrong here but yeah anyways you could watch me uh play video games maybe on twitch.tv slash game broke or you live come hang out with me chat with me tell me how much mike smells you know whatever oh, um, i can tell you how much i smell and i smell good oh Old Spice, right? <laughs> yes. At least you're not an axe guy. Also, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at GameBroCory. Instagram. Instagram. That's the new one. <laughs> Instagram is gone. Instagram yeah. is where it's at. Maybe even there might be an Insta Yam in the future. That's all yams. I love yams. I'd be cool with that. <laughs> that, that, that was a tangent. <laughs> you got any got anything to plug, Mike? Um, I think I'll just kind of like say yes. But you guys really should uh, go catch Corey on on Twitch or you Thank know follow you. him on Twitter, follow him on Instagram. Thank you. And uh, also, if you guys have ever wanted to see what I'm working on, uh, you can mainly mainly find me on YouTube. It's uh, the Collector's Vault, and uh, I do. You can also follow me on, on Instagram. Uh, you know, I'm usually just posting things about collectibles. I you know just uh if you guys want to i guess if you guys want to contact us directly you could always follow follow us on those and just send us messages and stuff oh yeah that's a good idea yeah and that's also where i'm going to keep trying to like send out little like uh like some stories and posts reminding people that if you want to send questions to us and you can have us answer them on the air we'll uh you know i'll put up I'll put little reminders on uh, instagram and stuff and uh youtube uh i'm definitely going to try to get some more videos out this week again it's been kind of tough with the house situation but uh, I yeah. do have a couple Let's go. Plays planned. And, oh, I'm sorry, Corey, go, go, go ahead. But no, please just keep plugging away. I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's right. I was just going to say I have a couple Metroid Let's Plays planned. But again, it's, uh, it's, I've been a little busy. And I'm also working on a Metroid review video, which I actually got a lot done last night. And I think I'm probably at like the three, the three quarters mark. So uh, hopefully that gets done pretty soon. And, uh, I, I was yeah. just gonna say, yeah, please go check out Mike's uh, videos on YouTube. I really enjoyed that very short video you did about like 2020. How, yeah, how worse can 2020 get? Yeah, yeah I thought that was a. Uh, nice I liked it. I actually had one guy comment on there. I don't get it, and I'm like, <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> like, well, clearly we don't have a fan of Dragon Ball Z. So that's all I, I can say. Yeah, I I don't know like anything about Dragon Ball Z. I got your reference. <laughs> all right. Well, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, that being said, uh, we're all done here. I guess we're gonna turn off the lights. Uh, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Yeah, get out of here, Corey. All right, later, internet. <laughs> Good night, guys. Next week, same time, same drinks, different pod. Uh, probably the same games. Yeah. <laughs> Toodles. Later. <laughs>